in the year 2013, the average Ghanaian found life very, very difficult. Why do I say that? One, most parents had a hard time paying their school fees. This is not a fact. Individuals and businesses struggle to pay higher utility bills. Did this not happen in 2013? Ghanaian consumers confidence declined. Ghanaian businesses struggle to deal with the doom so doom so phenomenon. We know this is a fact. Businesses in 2013 told us that the cost of business was going up. Consequently, their confidence was declining. In 2013, most contractors were either not paid or paid small amounts of the monies that they were owed. Is this not a fact? We all know that service providers, including caterers of school feeding program, most of whom, by the way, A very good morning to you once again and welcome to News File. This is your most authoritative news analysis show. I'm Samson Ladia Yenini. And this morning, President John Mahama, staying on top and faithful to his pledge to fight the criminal act he calls mass murder, corruption. In a brave and praiseworthy move, his government cancels GIDA contracts found to have failed the value for money test. But... Is that all for a true and complete value for money presidential fight against this one big scandal? He is not a teacher like his predecessor, so he won't give himself marks for his responsible, accountable, and transparent one year in office. Well, the biggest opposition has no problems at all scoring him. We will scrutinize the NPP's less than average, disheartening, and depressing score sheet. But why does the president seem to run away from taking responsibility for his impending ministerial reshuffle or his confession of pressure to sack finance minister was his way of telling those piling pressure to keep off and... I don't get it. Does prepaid meters for water means quantum leap in the price of the life-giving fundamental natural resource? You're welcome once again. We'll be right back with my guest for a full discussion of the issues. Ninety-nine point seven FM. And this is your Joy News channel on Multi TV. Welcome to your most authoritative, undisputably, and most intellectual uh, political discussion, if you like, uh, in this part of the, of the globe. Uh, now, you're welcome once again. Your views are welcome, 1422. There's a text line, 1422. You can post your comment also on our Facebook wall or send me a mail uh, to newsfile at myjoyonline.com newsfile at myjoyonline.com and i promise i'll deal with you a lot more of your messages today so uh, last week we had a problem forgive me about that we'll try and deal with most of your messages today now my guests are seated in the studio and we have uh, three major issues that we are going to be looking at I've already introduced them to you. The president has taken what uh, is being touted as a brave and praiseworthy, you know, uh, a course by cancelling the GIDA contracts. But is that all there is to it? There, there, there are those who insist that if he really means to fight this particular canker or this scandal, the people who sign these contracts, some of whom are in his government now, should also be shown the door, the exit. They should get out because they are not worthy of uh, keeping the public's uh, purse. We will also be looking at the, the, the score sheets that the minority presented about President Mohammed's one year in office. He said it was, uh, or government tagged it, a responsible, accountable, and transparent one year uh, in office. The minority has very interesting, I call depressing and disheartening 
uh, score sheets. We'll look at it, scrutinize it, put the facts before uh, it, and see how exactly it goes. And it was the president trying to just uh, run away from taking full responsibility when he does uh, do a reshuffle. And, uh, in, and in respect of the finance minister, a man who is largely perceived by sections of the Ghanaian, uh, of the Ghanaian populace as disciplined, professional, uh, who is doing his job. He says there's pressure on him to sack that man. We'll get into that one as well. And the Ghana Water Company is now going to put uh, prepaid meters to your water. What is the brouhaha about that? My guests are seated in the studio. Um, Mark Asibe Yeboa. He's the MP, Dr. Mark Asibe Yeboa. He's the MP for New Jabbing South. He's a member of uh, Parliament Finance Committee. And he's also a former senior economist with the Bank of Ghana. Good morning and welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'd, I'd ask you that uh, question earlier, you know, privately. I said I didn't know what uh, a former senior economist of the Bank of Ghana was doing in Parliament. Um, I think I'm doing well in yeah. Parliament with right. the finance and economic issues too. Over at the Bank of Ghana, if you did anything, you have to subject it to your superiors to right. approve that. Now I can speak my mind. At least. We, need, we, need, we need a parliament that is full of professionals and people who are intelligent and can go about their job yeah. in, the more, in a better way than we have uh, now. I'm sure that many people are not too enthused Thanks. about how things are managed in that house. We also have uh, um, uh, Mahama Ayarga. He is the Information Minister, Media Relations Minister, uh, Information and Media Relations Minister, and he is also uh, MP. Um, and a lawyer, good morning and welcome to the show once again. Good morning. Had a tough time with you last week. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you monitor, this, this week, you monitor this, the this reviews. Week, this week it will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Abraham Amalba, he is also a lawyer and he's a lecturer and a member of the NDC's legal team. Abi, good morning and welcome. Thank you for having and me. And I received the greetings from my Bo people. Bo Thank Bo you very much. Yeah. Uh, Egbert Fabel Jr., he's a lawyer. And also is a publisher of the of the I've forgotten the, the Ghanaian Observer, the Ghanaian Observer, Observer, Observer newspaper. Observer. The Ghanaian Observer newspaper. You know, within a time you were moving from one paper to the other. <laughs> Thank you very much, Senior, and welcome to the show. Thank you, my friend. Right. Of the MPP. Um, okay. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. I'm actually very proud of that badge. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Um, now we go straight to the issues that we have to discuss this morning. And the very first issue has to do with the action that the president took um, in the course of this week. Well, the, 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 we had a circular from a letter from the chief director um, informing all those who have contracts with JIDA. I'm talking about RLG just one group of companies that you famously will know as Zoom Lion and the Zira uh, group, cancelling the contracts that they had with JIDA. And that is being hailed, but some are saying that there are more questions that are popping up in that particular endeavor. Mr. Erga, this is the president truly fighting or keeping his promise to fight corruption no matter whose ox is God, is that it? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I think it's important to have a broader view of what has happened in this country in the last 12 months. There's been a lot of airtime <coughs> spent on discussing corruption, corruption, corruption. If you really analyze this closely, you find out that basically about two incidents have given rise to these discussions. One key incident has been the unraveling of happenings at JIDA. And of course, the second largely has been a carryover of discussions uh, two years ago from the isophotone uh, waterville uh, transactions and the court actions that followed 
and, and etc. Those are the two main incidents that have been uh, discussed and which have been used as, as issues that relate to corruption. JIDA, as we all know, started as an initiative to create employment opportunities and training opportunities for the youth and ran into a crisis because of uh, absence of a proper legislative and administrative framework mm. for execution of a project that attracted significant funding from um, Common Fund Administration, from uh, talk tax, from uh, National Health Insurance Levy, and etc. We scaled it up in the four years that we were in office between 2009 and 2012. Um, improved on some of the models, introduced many other models, and I think by the time that we were in December 2012, uh, if our memory serves me right, about uh, 400,000 or something young people had benefited from the, the program. Of course, when you have a program of this scale and you don't have an appropriate legal framework, um, clearly there will be um, uh, challenges. Mm. And some journalists started picking up those challenges. Most of it really initially related to activities in the field where, for instance, some uh, district JIDA officers and etc. were alleged to have been opening bank accounts, presenting fake names of people who were recruited into these youth employment opportunities, monies purportedly being paid to those ones were withdrawn by some of these officials. That's how it started. And then we went further and probed, and there was quite a movement around why don't we investigate this whole thing because so much national resources was going into it. And government, of course, then started the process of trying to really understand the scale of the malpractices that had uh, bedeviled this whole uh, initiative. It was then that we found out that there were structural causes because, um, because of the absence of legal framework and then also the type of models that were being introduced, weak monitoring evaluation systems, people took advantage of the, the scheme. And, and, and there were so many disparate schemes. I mean, you had activities uh, managed by JIDA, but financed by different sector ministries. And so coordination was a major challenge. So this whole thing has been described as scandal, as corruption, and etc. And government has been trying to say, yes, I mean, there were some criminal elements in some of the conducts. Is that okay? But frankly speaking and realistically, a lot of it has to do with systems failures. And for system failures, for you to correct it, you need to really appreciate exactly what happened so that you can put in place the right kind of measures. What we have seen up to date is a consistent program by government to address the problems and not to throw away the baby with the bath and water. Why do I say so? One, we realize that, um, yes, there were models that really did not meet the value for money you know, uh, criteria that the president had set as one of the things that we needed to evaluate. And as you have seen, the president has directed that those uh, contracts be terminated. The other thing that we also discovered, and this is a matter that has been investigated by Yoko. Uh, many people have appeared before Yoko, and I believe that very soon um, prosecution will begin. Uh, cases where <clears throat> clearly people fraudulently open accounts, um, uh, put money in those accounts, you know, in the name of uh, JIDA employees and, and, and siphon <coughs> those monies off. This matter, as you know, has been investigated. Some, some, some people have actually, you know, gone to court to challenge the allegations made <coughs> against them and etc. Then, of course, the, the models themselves, I mean, whether some of them are the right kind of models that we should be pursuing, and those ones are being looked at. But we are still working on the legal framework that needs to be put in place so that we can prevent this from recurring in, in, in future. So consistent with the promise that the president made in the various uh, statements that he made in relation to 
the initiative to um, make it difficult to be able to carry out acts of corruption. Um, we are putting in place all the, the measures and taking uh, all the steps that are is it, needed. Is it really a program that you are clearly aware of that is being rolled out systematically in the, in the way in dealing with this particular scandal? Or we are in a situation where the government and the president, you know, take one action after a certain pressure and people don't feel that that is sufficient enough, then there are questions about what else should be done that's not been done, and then one other step is taking. Now he's, he's done, or you've done what uh, we are now discussing, and there's another pressure that he really ought to be looking at another angle of it which uh, has not been looked at. I mean, in all fairness, I will say that we appreciate the public interest in this matter. Yes, because and, it's and, public and the, money. And, yes, and the fact that the public has been following very closely and discussing these issues. To some extent, you may come to a conclusion that there are efforts to stampede government in, in certain respects. But at the same time, you should not lose sight of the fact that governance runs in a certain way. For instance, it took us several months to carry out the full investigation into um, what happened to a point where people were banding some reports that were not the report of government, you know. And, and so when finally government presented its report and they claimed there were variances between what they had and what government had presented, then they tried to create an impression that there was some doctrine of a report. But government set up its committee Government hasn't presented a report. You go and find a document from somewhere. You have banded the document about. Then you come and tell us that the document you have is different from what government has presented. That's not what government has presented. The impression is report. that government has been lackluster about but, the whole yeah, business yes, yes. because it may not be sincerely committed to it. And I tell you this. After I got to know that there had been as many as three different investigations carried out and which reports had not actually been actioned, had not been implemented, and... Manasseh began digging into the whole story. When I was editing the very fair story that led to all of these things, I was extremely careful, even though I had so much evidence in my face, evidence that were official investigations making categorical conclusions about individuals who were involved. Yes, but, but as I indicated, the, the, the investigations and inquiries started in the field sometimes in relation to individual allegations. Initially, it started really about people opening accounts and then transferring monies into those accounts in the name of you that were purportedly employed under GDA. That's how it started. Right. And National Security, you recall, carried out some investigation into that. Actually had some names, and there were efforts to ensure that those people were brought to book. But then there were some more systematic you know, revelations, is that okay, of systemic challenges with the entire program itself. And that was when it became necessary to carry out a more comprehensive inquiry into GIDA and its activities and the various models and the financing of it and, and its administration and etc. So I don't want to think that, you know, it is a function of uh, government not being committed to find out what happened. It is, it is like you start something and then it reveals something else, then you have to take the next step and, and, and on and on and on. And even when this committee set up by the Minister of Youth and Sport finished its work. I mean, some experts also reviewed it for the purpose of the presidency, looked at it, and clearly there were challenges. I mean, you investigate a matter like this, and then not all the parties have been heard, and etc. and you want a president to take a decision based on a report that clearly says that some parties were not heard. Well, eventually, so, 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 well, so well, let me conclude well, eventually that. the president has taken yes, action yes, on yes. that same report. Precisely. Yeah, just hold on from yes. me. I return to you because there's a part of my question that I'll need you to deal with, whether this is really all that is required to faithfully and truly deal with this matter in the most effective manner. Dr. Esibe, you have heard some members of the opposition already suggest that, look, this is not what ought to be to, to happen. This, is, this, is, this, this may be good, but more is required. What do you say? Yeah, um, I don't think the... Uh, first, I think I, I should applaud the president some that he's 
finally abrogated some of these contracts because we are losing money by day from some of these contracts. So any abrogation saves the country uh, money. But uh, as uh, my colleague rightly indicated, there had been earlier committees. Uh, I recall uh, the former coordinator, Abu Gapele himself, set up a committee uh, following which the national security did some investigations. All these reports came up with the same findings that we, are, uh, we have arrived at today, but nothing happened. Then the ministerial committee also came, which was passed on to Mr. P.V. of being, and it's been some months now, and people have been calling for the president to act. Now, all of a sudden, we hear the president say he's uh, abrogated some contracts uh, uh, that uh, we have with GIDA. But many more contracts remain. As a matter of fact, Zoom Lions contract with GIDA still pertains, which contract had expired long ago, but that contract still pertains. So the question I'm asking is, why is the contract, the Zoom Lion contract with GIDA uh, uh, still pertaining? The minister has given some explanation. I'm talking about uh, Elvis Efriye Ankara. You're not satisfied with that uh, particular explanation. He says that the, the, GIDA, uh, the Zoom Lion contract with GIDA in respect of sanitation is such an important aspect uh, of, of the whole, you know, uh, contract that you cannot deal with it, you know, quickly without, is he suggesting without, the, the without other, a provision, alternative, to deal with sanitation in the country. Yeah, is he suggesting the other contracts were, were less important, the ones which have been abrogated? We are talking about value for money uh, inherent in these contracts. So uh, the modules which were training uh, so many years were also important, but they have been abrogated. In any event, the contract... The minister says that contract will be cancelled, but they are going through a certain transition. The contract with Zoom Lion expired February last year. So technically, there's no contract with Zoom Lion, and he's still being paid. Why, why are we not going after that? That's a huge contract with Zoom Lion. So some of these issues, let uh, uh, people raise concern that is the president really serious? You don't have a contract with Zoom Lion. One year on, you are still paying him under this same GIDA. Now, you talk about GIDA, but these uh, groups, if, you, if I may, they are, the, uh, uh, the bulk of these contracts went to the Jospon group, the Agams group, the Zira group. They own uh, most of these contracts. Okay? They are uh, existent in many more ministries, not just GIDA. If you talk about SUBA with GRE or technically the Ministry of Finance, SADA, so there are many more contracts which are fraught with discrepancies, inefficiencies, and leakages. What is the government doing about all of these? The recommendations from the GIDA report that there should be prosecutions. There are people in the president's government who have been mentioned. What is happening to those? So I would applaud him for taking this step, but I expect the, pre the president to go further. And let us see the prosecutions. These same groups owe the government of Ghana. The Just One group owes us close to about 150 million Ghana cities. We, the government and people of Ghana gave money to them. They are supposed to repay us up until now. They haven't done that. Uh, those they were supposed to train, if you talk of RLG, there are so many issues. So it's not just the abrogation of a few contracts. Some remain. They still exist in other ministries. And then oh, uh, we say, okay, all is over. Let us see the prosecutions. Let us see the refunds that they are supposed to uh, make to the people of Ghana. If I see the president go that, that far, then I would say that, yes, he's doing well. But yes, um, cancellation of some contracts, it's, it's okay. But On the point of the refunds, are you aware of the, the government having uh, put out in the public domain that there have been some agreements with the parties involved, RLG and uh, the Just One Group and co., to refund the monies that ought to be refunded. So show us the agreement. Tell us um, the agreement you have with these groups that, okay, they are supposed to make these refunds quarterly or annually. Tell us, because they were charging us interest rates in excess of 100% a month. Are you, are you, I'm sure you are well aware of that. So if now the OS and they have to make refunds, tell us the agreement. Put it in the public domain so that we can what check. Yeah. yeah, so tell us. We haven't seen anything of that sort. So that we can uh, follow and make checks on these. These are the kinds. You want of to things. see the document. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. Because you don't trust government. Sure. 
Because these... What's, what's, what's your skepticism? What's, what's your... What, why? I've told you there's a contract with Zoom Line, mm. which, are, which expired in February 2013, but he's still being paid. Why is it, why is it the case? That Zoom Lion is still being paid, his contract with Gina, even though that contract has expired. And the minister is window dressing the issue. These are the critical issues that I'm concerned about. Egbert, yeah. I, I don't know how you see the very latest action in addition to what has already happened. Well, let me, let me say that, you see, it is, it is very cosmetic, to say the least. Cosmetic? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is cosmetic. It, it, is, it is maybe put in an area. It's a mascara. Mm -hmm. Ghanaian said, cancel the contracts. The committee recommended cancel the, the contracts that do not have value for money. The president or the government has gone ahead to implement that. Yeah, because you see something. Let's, let, before I even come to this thing, let's, let's look at this thing holistically. You see, this is not the first time since the advent of this republic that we have had such youth employment and whatever schemes let's 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 go through the gamut during the Kwame Nkrumah era we all at least came to read and for those who are alive or young during the Nkrumah era we know about the workers brigade concept you fast forward during Buzia's time we came to the national service scheme you, you understand and I think that if I'm not mistaken somewhere along the line we also had uh, some kind of a Ghana national reconstruction call and then, of course, under President Kufo, we had this National Youth Employment Program, which has now transmogrified into JIDA, which is something that is staring at all of us in the face. So what is it from all these models or concepts that, you know, I've just given, that we did not do right, that we have this kind of... That the National Service Scheme, is it going through these challenges? It is not, because it is well-structured, established person to an act of parliament has a board and all those things. So when something is started on a pilot scheme, like the National Youth Employment Program by the Kufu administration, our friends in the NDC come to government, don't even possibly understand the concept and what, you know, was driving it at the time. Just take it, take the name, Ghana Youth Employment and Entrepreneurial Agency, JIDA. Give it a long name and start giving contracts. You see, for example, for example, at a point and under the Kufa administration, when it became very difficult to pay the, 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 the if like the workers or, or whatever, or the youth in the various, <laughs> you know, models, models at the time. Beneficiaries. Beneficiaries, fine. I think government approved Agriculture Development Bank, ADB. And ADB was every now and then giving monies, you know, to pay these beneficiaries, and then government will pay back. When this government took over, what they did was to terminate the ADB um, contract or loan arrangement, and then found money for the service providers at zero interest rates with a very wide period of amortization, in fact, limitless. I mean, how can any government be this wicked to the very people it says it is working for? You take government money, give it to a private service provider, use it to pay the beneficiaries, and then there's no interest rate, and they don't even have a time limitation to pay back the loan. And you say you are working for the people. I would prefer a government that would, in giving such loans, even say that this is the interest rate. You must pay back the money in this period. So when all these things, this rot has gone on, and then all of us, one fine day, because Ghanaians are talking, and because this government is a communication government, <laughs> the president comes out and says that I have terminated the contract. And then my, my very good friend, Honorable, is even saying that, oh, he, 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 I, mean the, 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 I mean, he commends the president. I will not commend the president. In Ghana, when people do what they have to do, they come out and because they can communicate, they say that I have done it. So clap for me. It should not, the president should not even be involved in this. This is a simple matter for me, from a very common sense standpoint. The state is being robbed. The state is being deprived of revenue. 
Look, we, 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 we live in a country where schools in the northern region, senior high schools, have had their reopening delayed. Meanwhile, this is a government or a country that has a project beautiful called SADA, seeking to alleviate poverty. Is there not a correlation between education and poverty? That if you don't educate people, they get, they get poor. <laughs> and so, at a very cosmetic level, you create SADA. But fundamentally, the liberating weapon, which is education, you are depriving or saying there's no money. And you expect that students in the senior high schools in the northern parts of Ghana to write the same exams with the students in the southern part of Ghana, and then when you finish, you go and create SADA. I mean, I, I, I think that this is, this, is, this is wicked. It is wicked. It is not commonsensical. We need to sit back. We need to sit back and challenge ourselves with respect to some of these things. Some of the models that, that, that you see. And I hold, I hold, I hold, you know, the government action paper on the, on the ministerial impact assessment, the review that was done. You yeah. see, beautiful English. They, they say inadequate critical matters arising out of this report. No law backing the establishment of the National Youth Employment Program, stroke GIDA. No legislative enabling instrument to operationalize the law. No governing board, executive management team, ill-defined inadequate organizational structure. No conditions of service to regulate employee relations. No code of conduct to regulate employee conduct. No scheme of service. Who asked the government to race with GIDA the way it raised with GIDA? You know that, the, look at the national service scheme. It is backed by a law. There's a board and all those things. So we don't have these problems. National service had modules like farms and all those things. We all used to go to the national service farm at Papa O to work. The revenue from there was paid into the consolidated fund. So what was it with GIDA? Because on the campaign soapbox, you, you, you said you are for the youth. So come on, let me run with the youth. So without care, who will run his private business this way? Who? Nobody. Ask anyone in government, from my very good friend, Honorable Ayaga, seated to my left, ask him if he ever ventures into business. These terms that have, these things that have arisen out of Jida, would he run a, a business model like this? We run businesses. We are scared to venture because there's something called risk. Risk. The bankers know risk, insurers know risk. So why is it that government doesn't know risk? Why? I mean, these are, these are things for which people should be fired. These are things for which people should be prosecuted. And beyond the prosecution, refunds with interest. Because it is money belonging to the people. People in the northern regions, senior high school, are not going to school. And some people under the rot the called GIDA. This money is in the daily graphic. Yes, uh, 50, 50 million cities. Yes, has been yeah, but, but they so had to make a lot of noise. They had to make a lot of noise. Why have you decided to no, make that no, no, but this they delayed, morning's they discussion? Delayed. No, no, yes, no. There no, was but, delay, but the money oh, has are been you, Are you taking away my right to comment <laughs> on the gross act of negligence of the system of the government? I feel for the, I feel for the sure, people. Sure I feel for the students of the senior high schools in the north. It is not proper. These are the reasons why there's a chasm of poverty in Ghana. And SADA is supposed to bridge the gap. You've created an apex body, and at the very foundation, you are rather deepening poverty. You are rather deepening poverty, and then you create SADA. So you now go and create SADA 2, SADA 3, SADA 4, SADA 5, or what? This is commonsensical, and I think it's a shame. Let, let move to, Anybody let, let connected move to with Abraham this, any that. government that has superintended mm. this GIDA system, should, should, should actually be begging the people of Ghana. Mm. Let, let me move to Abraham on that note. And uh, Abraham, you, 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 must, you must have heard... Oh, you, it's analysis. <laughs> you must have heard Dr. Mark Sibeyabwa say that there, there are just one group of companies' contracts that are still subsisting. And uh, every free anchor's explanation is that Zoom Lion is undergoing a transition and that uh, they need to go through a certain process because of the 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 sanitation module is managed by zoom lion and the sanitation we have a, a huge sanitation challenge in this country there are questions that are coming up it is the same entity that took monies and it it was giving is it 500 was supposed to then it paid only a hundred ghana to the beneficiaries and took 400 as uh, management fees. 
the questions are rising also. It was also supposed to put monies into a uh, provident fund for the beneficiaries, about 70,000 of them. It didn't do so, or it did it deduct the money, it deducted the, the money, but never put them in the fund for these people to benefit. Is this all that we, we, we ought to see? Samson, let me say that um, during the election petition, we saw a word transmogrified um, <laughs> that um, the president's <laughs> vote transmogrified from a certain figure to another. And I know the root of this, this, this word. I know it's coming from a favor. <laughs> <laughs> um, Samson, you see, was it wicked on the part of the Kufu administration when schools in the three northern regions failed to reopen at a certain point? And was it also uh, not commonsensical at that time? <laughs> so sometimes when we attack governments, we should also appreciate the bureaucracy involved in the release of funds. The fact that government was not able to release funds immediately cannot be that that government is wicked and not commonsensical. It's become an annual ritual. Yes. So what we do, we should tackle the bureaucracy involving the transfers of funds. That is what we should do. If but you, not if you have your private entity and you employ a manager who, 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 under whose watch you had a problem recurring annually, what would you do to them? That's what some of the people are asking. That and is a valid question. No, I'm saying that it's valid the way you put it. But to describe a government as wicked, oh, yes. non, uh, what, commonsensical, for me, is using words which do not sit well with the situation that we have in, hands, in our hands. Now, on the issue of uh, just one group of companies and then the sanitation model, this is a government that has to manage the affairs of the country. And it must manage it in such a way as to improve upon the well-being of the Ghanaian. So if you have a model such as sanitation, which has to do with improving upon our sanitation problems, and you know we have a huge, huge difficulty in managing our sanitation, you will not be a government that will be callous to quickly take off that project and say that, yes, it has expired, yes, it has... Um, um, Monies have been paid, and for that matter, let's abrogate it. You do that only if you have an alternative to the issue of sanitation. <clears throat> and so, when you read what the minister pointed out in his statement, it is this philosophy that has guided this government to continue with that sanitation model and just that sanitation model, so as to ensure that we improve or continue to have uh, the issue of sanitation improving. The, the next question is, is government sleeping over that contract? And I can tell you that sometimes a contract can go on, then you regularize it subsequently. <laughs> and he knows that. So... We will now... February of 2013 yes. to January of 2014. How long do you need to effect such? Yes. You notice that you also pointed out some difficulties that were inherent in the um, just one, that, that, that sanitation model. These are matters that you will need to address within the sanitation model. That is to say, the payment to beneficiaries, the pro, uh, provident fund, these things require internal uh, purging. And so you cannot go ahead to regularize this if those issues still pertain. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the reasons probably that kept the project or the regularization so long. But you see, these things that we are talking about, about the Jida. Now who calls them? Mm -hmm. If the government that put in place this model or this uh, program had put in place laws to regulate the activities of this organization. Would we be where we are today? The absence of laws hey. regulating an activity means people should steal? No. <laughs> you cannot also tell me 
that some of the problems we are facing now is not as a result of the absence of laws. So the two go hand in hand. You can still, yes, I agree, but you can also throw away the fact that because there are no laws regulating the chain of command, who is to do what, who reports to who, how things are done, can also feed into the things that you are talking about. I have asked this question last week. In the NPP's era, we do not have any reports of what has happened and has been investigated and action is being taken on. Meanwhile, that time, there were no laws regulating the entity. That's a laughable matter. Did the MPP institute an investigation into their own uh, activities? Did they do that? Did they, did Nana Komia, who started a program, do an internal introspection as this government, a transparent government, yeah. did to itself? People in our government are even blaming us for what we are doing. So you are comparing X and uh, other things. So the point is that if we had put in place the mechanism that will regulate the activities of Jida, we won't be where we are. But as a government, we've taken the bull by the horn. I've heard somebody say that, uh, Egbert, for instance, indicate that companies refunding monies is cosmetic. Eh? Yes, you said, that. That. you said that. You I said that. You said that. You said those acts are cosmetic. I didn't say that. You used the word quote quote cosmetic. I said and all those measures that have been announced are cosmetic. They are a mascara. Yes. And what are they, what have been announced? <laughs> Companies to refund that. funds, uh, to yes. refund monies. Yes. Uh, contracts abrogated. Yes. And you call this cosmetic? Mm -hmm. If you were a director of one of the companies, I don't think that you would feel that this is cosmetic. Mm. There is a question that was raised by Dr. Sibe that he has little faith in government receiving or collecting these monies. I think he's a member of parliament. He can raise that issue on the floor of parliament and compel, speaker, and, compel, and compel yeah. the minister to come and provide answers to this. I can be talking that way. Edgar can be talking this way. But for him, as a member of parliament, we found Cannot the be question talking this way. Bank. We found he the has the capacity the on the floor of parliament so. <laughs> to request the Minister of Finance to come and tell the people of this country how these monies are going to be received the and how they are going to be received. Me, they so I think so. that we should not, as a people, use a platform mm. such as this to skew the argument. Mm. This government initially was told that we can never do anything about this data. That President John Mahama is uh, a director in one of the companies of Adam's group and will not be able to take the bold steps. These are bold is this steps. a fact or you are putting it out? What's that President Mahama is a you, director you've of, you've one heard, of the you've Adams not, You've not heard that from your, from your, your camp? No, I haven't heard it. Uh, but you can have eyes and you will see. This is the first time I'm hearing it. You can have eyes but you can you, see. And I heard it from you. And you can, you can be sleeping <laughs> and uh, pretending to be sleeping. <laughs> so the point is that President John Mahama has indicated that, and this government has indicated that, due process must be allowed to work. No pressure at all on this government to do what it is doing. Hmm. If pressure were the basis for the action, I'm sure people in opposition would have expected that some people would have been in jail by now. But due process is what is allowed to roll out. Hmm. So I do not think <coughs> that there's pressure on the president to do what he's doing. Mm. There are more steps to come. People who are in government, as you have indicated, and that their heads must rule. If the investigations point to them, this president will not hesitate to crack the whip. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Aga, that's a question I'd like you to address. He says, if the investigation points to them, for example, Kofi Homado, who signed most of the contracts, um, we are also told that factually, Nana Komiya of the NPP also during his time signed some of these same contracts, really. But the question is, for you to have made an assessment and come to the conclusion that these contracts do not meet value for money, you know, the, the value for money test, that is a vindication of the public score that whoever, whoever gave out these contracts can no longer be trusted with the public purse because what they have done is evidence of 
how they go about their business. Let me just read this text and then you tell us if uh, the president is intended to take administrative actions, not uh, uh, judicial one. Nana Ansa uh, Abofor in London writes, I am shocked and surprised that the government finds it appropriate to cancel the contract of service providers with JIDA and tell them to contact the Attorney General and pay back monies giving them without a time frame. I think the government is not serious in retrieving the monies, whilst we need money for developmental issues in the country. <clears throat> Forgive me. And uh, he's simply speaking to the letter that was issued. The letter simply gave them the opportunity to go to the, uh, uh, you know, the Attorney General or to come to the government and determine how they wanted to refund the monies. Kobe in Kumasi writes, if a, liabil a liability company has a legal right to sue and to be sued, how can you then say that it should be treated with kit gloves when it defaults in a business transaction by attributing it to system failures? Mahama Yarga, please come again. Bonti Benjamin in Achim Tafo writes, the Jida rot is terrifying taxpayers. We only pray that Mahama led NDC government will summon the courage to retrieve the huge sums of taxpayers' money doled out for no work done, all in the name of Jida. Lord save Ghana. Park Jinenu in Savilugu writes, is Ganiu, Ganiu in Savilugu writes, clearly this government has demonstrated beyond commitment that it has the requisite zeal to fight corruption. Ibrahim Kopa in Tamale writes, the cancellation of the JIDA contract by the president is absolutely belated. And it is also a euphemism for accepting that JIDA contracts were indeed characterized by socioeconomic highway robbery of the state by, way, uh, by high profile government appointees and their cronies. Yamusa in Kumbungu writes, this approach by President John Mahama is nothing more than populism. The rot that has occasioned Jida is a serious corruption scandal and must be beyond, must go beyond just asking people to refund monies. If there is an element of criminality, as indi indicated by the Honorable Minister Mahama Yarga, then Ghanaians would want to see prosecutions and people being removed from government offices. I'll take a final one from Kofi Watting. In Kumasi, says something is Mahama Yarga telling Ghanaians that the existing laws on corruption are not enough to deal with the Jida rot. I think it is the height of hypocrisy for the government to hide behind the so called lack of legal framework. What is rather lacking is a bold leader to lead the crusade against blatant corruption. It's a shame. Thank you very much for your messages. 1422 that's the text line. You can also post them on our Facebook wall. And we will read them or send them to me at newsfile at myjoyonline.com. The show is brought to you by the kind of sponsorship of MTN. Everywhere you go, Bank of Africa, as close as a partner. Uh, and uh, this uh, Star Assurance, that is your CIMG Insurance Company of the Year, is also your solid partner as well. And Erata Motors, they have the best vehicles at the best prices. Zayaga, how do you respond? And you hear you heard one of the texters also actually echo that particular uh, sentiment that uh, the, 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 there are more people who ought to face some action by the revelations, uh, by the admissions of government that these contracts uh, do not have value for money. Well, I mean, uh, thank you very much. I think um, <clears throat> first and foremost, the refunds, the agreement. I mean, they, 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 they appealed, they negotiated with the Attorney General. The directive was that they pay almost immediately. And, of course, you are dealing with corporate entities. And when you want them to pay, sometimes you have to have regard to uh, their financial flows and etc. So the agreement is that they must all pay within 12 months. And the money is structured in such a way that they pay every quarter. And so by... 12 months, they should finish. What some uh, don't understand is that you've given out money and giving them out in the name of loans. Mm -hmm. We're aware of money yeah, in excess me, of 50 let, million that was given to the yes. RLG group. Yeah, it is and the job that they were to, supposed to use that money for has not started. Yes, so it is the money should be sitting in the account. It, it is important to understand <laughs> what happened Chris Brown. to Jida. <laughs> I mean, basically, these were arrangements for 
creating employment opportunities and training opportunities for the youth. Along the way, there were challenges, and he mentioned a challenge that started rearing its head under the NPP. At the end of the month, or sometimes for several months, government was unable to effect payment. Mm. And the youth, as you would know, uh, tends to put a lot of pressure. You owe a young man 100 Ghana cities, and uh, he has promised his girlfriend something, and then you are not owning up. The GDA officers in the district will be harassed. The, there were issues. And so private entities started approaching GDA with what appeared to be innovative ways of circumventing some of these challenges. One, they innovated in terms of the kind of things that we could do that would keep the youth engaged. That's how come you saw a proliferation of a number of models. People thought of very creative ways of getting the youth engaged. Youth in then, then, then secondly, one. there's nothing wrong it's with that. If it's done well, there's, <laughs> there's, 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 there's nothing but wrong with that. There's, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that if you do it well. Is that okay? Because we all recognize that the creative arts is perhaps one of the very high employers you know, in addition to the tourism industry. And I think that's pointing out well. to you that there's an established entity in this country with the pedigree to do that job. Why do you give it to someone who cannot show you a scintilla of evidence of any, you know, track in Re that? Remember, remember that these institutions, there are academic institutions <laughs> that, that, that are certified to award degrees yes. and diplomas. Yes. You could have said that all the youth should have sent, be sent to Legon because Legon is a university. No it's meant for training uh, people. <laughs> why, why did you start uh, GDI when you had Legon? Because Legon is a known university with, with, with certification to do X, Y, Z. Is that okay? These young people, did they have the qualification to be admitted to, no, to, to I'm NAFTA? I'm not saying they should this, go this to NAFTA as students. Is, the point but is, the thing should be brought under the aegis of NAFTA. Allow me to, NAFTA to guide allow them. Me to, so allow, to me to, allow me to them. engage oh, no. in the discussion. Is that okay? Allow me to engage oh, no, in the no, discussion. No, you can go on. Yes. But I'll come back to it. Yes, so yeah. that was the concept. So in, alongside innovating new models that could keep the youth employed, they started innovating financing arrangements to also help uh, GIDA, which is we pay finance, we do X, Y, Z, and then you pay later. And therefore, in innovating the financial model, you also have to take into account the cost of the financing. Because when government delays and doesn't pay for several months and there's pressure, the implementer of the model can't keep telling the youth that, oh, we're waiting for government. He has to go to the same, the same ADB that government used to go to and borrow the money. He might not even get ADB. He might have to go to UT Bank. He might have to go to some other bank, which perhaps an, a higher interest rate. So they came along with financing models also, which cost money. So both the innovation in the, the type of things that they could do and the financing all cost money. And that was the package that was presented as service provision. And it is not only in Ghana that we do service provision. Indeed, recently, in the UK, there are hospitals. They were contracting out to private people the management of government hospitals because of the challenge in terms of governmental efficiency, inefficiency, and the belief that the private sector tends to be more efficient in managing these things. The same way, if you go around the world, you find out even schools in some jurisdictions, they contract out the management of public schools because they believe that public schools, I mean, uh, sometimes are inefficiently run, but private operators can sometimes do better. So Ghana was beginning to see a version of service providers, <laughs> private sector people, coming up with ideas about how to provide a public service, hoping that it will be more efficient and less costly, ultimately, given uh, productivity well, levels. In fact, we are going to so, do a so, lot more yes. of that because of the PPP. Yeah, yes, you know, precisely. precisely. No, 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 you haven't had PPP. Listen carefully. So these were the ideas. This is how the service provision team started. Now, why do we say that it started without the proper legal framework, not just ordinary laws on corruption. The whole idea of how do you evaluate a service provision? Elsewhere, prisons are managed by private people. You know that private companies. Elsewhere, prisons are managed by private companies. 
So in Ghana, when we started this thing, what was the proper legal framework? How do you assess? How do you monitor? Do you have the infrastructure for doing that? Arguably and admittedly, on the side of government, there was a lapse in that respect. And we haven't denied that. The president hasn't denied that the administrative and legal framework challenges that um, confronted us are not as a result of our own you know, failing. And, and, and as I said, because it started under the NPP and we took over and scaled it up, it's, it's, it's governmental it's failure across... You're making that admission yes, that you also had a, a failing in the process. No, because no, the question it's, is it's, being asked yes. that but when did you just realize that these uh, modules or whatever, this uh, particular entity didn't have a legal framework? No, no, no. Because it's, you've been managing it since 2009. Yes, that's, that's true. So, so we discovered that, you know, following the investigations, following the, 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 the concerns raised by the public through media houses such as yours, investigating some reports of, of abuses here and there. So, you see, when you, when you know how it developed and you know the good intention behind the development themselves and you see that in the process there were challenges. Now, when you are doing a review, you are trying to find out whether those challenges, were they genuine uh, as a result of um, weakness in terms of knowledge about how to do it, mm. or were they just outright deliberate you know, efforts by people to defraud the state? When you come to that position where you are certain that, look, this is clear, deliberate, you know, effort to defraud the state, then you treat it as a criminal matter. But when you track and you trace and you analyze the agreements and you look at the developments and you see that there was a genuine effort to innovate, but the people doing this innovation lacked institutional capacity hmm. and lacked the technical capacity to structure these things. Look, what are you talking about? Why? Oh, we were, we were, looking, for, we were looking for international financing and we went to saloons to try and then find those monies. Okay, now I mean the intention. The intention is to find. The intention is to find. Do this for me. The intention is to find money. Do this for Ghana. Do this for me. In one lack minute. Of in one minute. I like lack you, of capacity. I like you to directly oh. respond to the question. Yes. That the concern now is this. Yes. That the president has all the opportunity to take some administrative action. Yes. Against those who signed these contracts with the service providers yes because of the verdict that you have come to yes that these contracts were lopsided do no value for money were or, or, were, were, were were against conscience no 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 no, no. conscience i mean if you put it that way there there are disagreements about the policy measures that were taken you have a broken listen, listen carefully there are disagreements about the policy measures that were taken for instance if you if you agree that the way to go in the future is to build private entities to provide public service. And you say that consequently, there's a need to build the capacity of these private entities to be able to provide these services because of the volumes of money that we are putting in their care. And that requires you to pre-finance them in certain ways. And you go ahead to do that. That is the policy. Mm -hmm. We may today disagree with it and say, why did we give them that money? But it's a policy decision that somebody takes. Mm. And if he takes it, you know, believing that that is the right thing to do, that's a completely different matter. So, right. so, the, point, so the point that I'm making is this, <laughs> that we are carrying out investigations systematically. One after the other, measures are being taken to address the issues. Thank We're not doing it simply because There's there is public pressure. Right. And I can assure you that on the issue of individual culpability, of public officers under the presidency of John Dramani Mahama. If we get to the point where it is clear to us that you are not just pursuing a legitimate public objective wrongly, mm. but that you were clearly engaged in some you know, act to defraud the state in collusion mm. with private we'll providers. With. I now, have no now, doubt now, that now, President now, John Rabbi Mahama now, now, now will Egbert, take the right action. Yeah, Egbert seem to think that you appear to be justifying something you have already pr pronounced a, a verdict on that is mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. Really, he gives you an explanation, a sort of a justification that you don't take the steps that a, a, a section of the public is calling for now because you do not have 
the evidence that they deliberately and willfully signed onto those contracts for their personal benefits. Mm -hmm. You see, um, let me, let me, you see, government, I, I, my, 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 my very good friend, Mama Yariga, I mean, we, we go back from our days in Libya. But he's not treating me like a friend this morning. Oh, no, 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 like no, a friend this because, morning. Because, yeah. you are, because you are a member of government, <laughs> we voted you guys into government, and we hold you accountable. That's so. You, you are, if you like, the mouthpiece of the government. But we're and, not wicked. Yeah, uh, well, well, <laughs> but let, let, know, let me show you. Not you. Not oh, no, 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 oh, you, you, you are not, but the collective, but the collective, the collective can be wicked. Now, look at chapter two of the, of the, the report, of yeah. official report. Listen to what was said. The concept says, in 2012, following a series of discussions aimed at making JIDA more effective and responsive to the employment needs of the youth, cabinet gave approval on 1st November 2012 to the renaming, into brackets, rebranding of the program as the Ghana Youth Employment and Entrepreneurial Development Agency. Cabinet also approved a recommendation by its committee in governance legal and security that JIDA should be vested with a legal identity and directed that in the meantime a five-member advisory board be set up to play a supervisory role and to closely monitor the ongoing exercise to restructure the program. The board was also to oversee the migration of existing personnel onto the new structure and grades recommended in the scheme of service approved by the Public Services Commission. Now, you as of 2012 had identified that illegal identity ought to, yeah. to, 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 to come into, yeah. into place. You even, in this report, they go on to say that the proposed five-member advisory board has not yet been set up. This was as of the date of this report. Mm -hmm. However, a draft Ghana Youth Employment Development Agency bill has been prepared and submitted to cabinet for consideration. Mm -hmm. Honorable Mama Ayaga, mm -hmm. where is that bill? Has it been completed? You see, oh, yeah. the, 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 it, so it's, it's before Parliament? No, no, it hasn't gone to Parliament yet. It's, mm -hmm. it's a matter that we are discussing. We are looking at the, the details. The, the new um, uh, interim coordinator, if I may mm -hmm. put it that way, mm -hmm. uh, has proposed that he wants to, because of the interest that has mm -hmm. been expressed, he wants to carry out some more public consultation Good. with stakeholders. Mm -hmm. We are hoping that when this Parliament you know, reconvenes, not the kind of reconvening that uh, was, uh, was no made. problem. When we reconvene, yeah. this matter will be brought to Parliament so you for, see, for consideration. So you see, these are, if you like, some fundamental issues that ought to be dealt with before. Otherwise, even in the interim, all that is going on, once again, it's a mascara. The fundamental issue is the legal identity created. But I'm not surprised. This is a government that purported to establish a university. University of the one you hold and those other ones, when they had not gone to parliament with any law to institute, the, then you were in education. And I, I, I even raised those matters. And then eventually there was a concession that every public university is established pursuant to an act. So even with respect to public universities, the new ones that were coming, they were announced, yes, no problem. But work started, work started on those universities even before there was an appropriate or appropriate acts of parliament. And I'm not surprised that having identified mm -hmm. among others that the, the issue of a legal identity or legal personage is something that ought to be tackled. We are still going on. The months are, are rolling by. You see, and then my friend um, um, Amaliba says that, now who caught him? For those were his words. You see, I need to uh, address him on something. The MPP or the Kufa administration started the NYEP virtually on a pilot scale, you understand? And so with time, with time, all those things were going to be done. And if you speak to Nana Komiya, he will tell you all these things. Now, the problem with, or the issues arising thereof is that when um, the NDC took over and wanted to possibly also give it their own touch, they, they bloated the thing with all, look at some of the models, youth in taxi driving, youth in allied health services, Youth in agribusiness, youth in trades and vocation, youth in ICT, youth in community protection, youth in water and sanitation, rural education teaching assistants, auxiliary healthcare workers assistant, paid internships and uh, industrial attachments, vocation jobs and volunteer service. How can you? How can you even create a model for volunteers? Somebody who wants to volunteer. <laughs> what happens to the voluntary work compensation of Ghana? Volu, if you ask people, they will tell you over the vacations, students in their universities used to go all around Ghana to go. These, these things are in existence. You come and create because 
you want to create some kind of a pipeline, a Byzantine arrangement <laughs> through which, you know, you create a maze and then you enter the maze, you get lost and monies will be siphoned and chopped the way it has been done. Thank God that the media, the likes of Manasseh, Azure and Co., have brought these things up and today government is pretending that at least it is answering to the people from its communication standpoint, you know, kind of fixation. But I say, without fear of equivocation, that this is a shame. Anybody in government who assisted in the purveying of this rot on the people of Ghana ought to be held accountable. Don't hold the ordinary people. Yes, they were the first actors. But there's something called abetment. There's something called conspiracy. You don't need to meet up with somebody to agree to go and rob Samson's house, for example, before you and the, the robber can be charged with robbery or, or conspiracy to rob. If you both found yourself there at the same time and an enterprise like robbery took place, conspiracy is your portion. Mm. There are a lot of conspirators and co-conspirators in government with respect to this GDI report. And I dare the government to be bold. You heard, you heard um, what's his name? Abu Gapele. The former coordinator or head of right. Jida, he said, why? They are trying to make him a sacrificial lamb. Sacrificial lamb. That should give you a certain concept. In ancient Israel, when they, they talk about scapegoats, it used to be that one particular goat on the day of atonement will be brought out. And everybody will go to that goat and say their sin onto the goat. And then the goat will be killed, right? in sacrifice for their sins. Okay. He is being made that kind of goat, and he's protesting. So who are the people who have gone to Honorable Abu Gapele as a scapegoat and said their prayers of sins on for him to be sacrificed? <laughs> they are in government. They should come out, or government should flash them out for us to see them. Okay, when, 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 well, I'm going to do something. When, when I come back, I'm going to hear from the two of, me, of them. When I come back, strictly two minutes, I want you to list what next steps you want to see. Definitely. on this particular matter. Definitely. And Mahama Yaga will tell us in two minutes also, strictly, what the government sincerely will do within the very short time to end this matter in a manner that satisfies the larger, you know, uh, uh, populace of the country. The Egbert had raised concern about the sort of slow manner, and Dr. Esbeyebo also says so, in which you seem to be requiring, government seem to be requiring those service providers to come and make the refunds. For example, in the, and, I, and I asked the question that there were some who were advanced loans, and as far as we know, the projects that for which they were advanced the loans have not commenced. They have not done anything, so those money should be sitting. So you ask them to cough up the money immediately. In 20. Uh, 13, RLG was paid, for example, 2.5 uh, million Ghana cities. 25, 25. Yeah, yeah, that's 25 million, yeah. 25 million Ghana, 25.5 million Ghana cities to train 15,000 youth in ICT. It ended up training only 4,222, which means you could be specific and ask them, this is the amount of money we gave you you have trained only 4,000, meaning the remainder for the training of uh, about 11,000 is still sitting and cough it immediately. So the approach is a bit of treating them with kid gloves, like some are saying. It's a simplistic way of looking at it. When monies go into companies' accounts, don't think that they are just lying there. They could be cross-financing, you know. And so uh, the money could be in the account, yes, They've not utilized the money for the project that they have been asked to do, but it's possible they could use it for another project, knowing that before they start what they are supposed to do, that under money would have come, or uh, the, um, interest would have accrued from them. So it's not as simple as that. But you see, the issue with the training of the beneficiaries, the service providers have argued, and for me, I see their argument as cogent. That look, we are not the people to go look for the beneficiaries. You are supposed, and that's government, are mm. supposed to provide the people for us to train. So if you don't provide the numbers, we can't train. And so if you make it look as if they were supposed to train a certain number, but they are falling short of it, 
it will look like they have failed to provide a training. But just that, those who are supposed to be trained were not provided to them. So that must be explained. The issue of the loans, the Attorney General discovered that these monies must be refunded because the way Amana those monies were given out did not meet the laws of Ghana, that is the Loans Act, and the Constitution. Hmm. You cannot be talking about criminality in there. You can't. Unless you can show that those monies were paid so as for somebody to benefit. But that's people are, that's people what, are standing trial for wait, financial wait, engineering. Wait, wait. People are standing trial for financial is engineering. Is this financial engineering? But this is another version of financial <laughs> engineering. <laughs> another <laughs> version. <laughs> Alajida. Another version. Yes, you are creating your version. version. Yes. It, may, it may not be criminal, but it bad, is not criminal. bad judgment on the, on good, the part of a... Good. Uh, causing financial, financial good. loss. Financial good. Causing financial Something. loss. You are now putting the West in their right form and places. Please. But you don't... Attach criminality to this. <laughs> you have a situation where Egbert is talking about the list of uh, modules. Yes. There's nothing wrong with that. Provided they were handled properly. Hmm. There's nothing wrong with were creating they, those modules. Were they handled properly? Good. But to, to, to make it look like... Ridiculous. Very good. To ridicule... Those models, ridiculous. you've given me the word. Yes, ridiculous. I see they were, were they were unnecessary. Assistance. And advancing the argument that yes. we have NAFTA, we have what? Yes. Volu voluntary Volu we have. of Ghana. Yes. Look, it comes to a point where a special purpose vehicle is set to deal with a, a, a matter. But that is what you the know that. Is. You know that. Special purpose. No. To siphon if and you, collapse it. If you, if you advance that argument, I will also ask you. Mm -hmm. We have hospitals. I won't answer. Why are we? It's a rhetorical question. Uh -huh, okay. I won't answer. We have hospitals. <laughs> Why do we create clinics? Oh, oh what? As, as feeders. Yes, as yes. feeders. No. As we as have feeders. the courts. Yes. Why do we create Shiraj? Oh, but what you know that. What is O? You know that. I'm telling you that. You know that. A answer. time comes when a people will say that we need to deal with a special a situation. Mm -hmm. And so we must create an institution that will be concentrating its effort in dealing with that matter. Right. So, there's nothing wrong with the creation of those institutions, mm. but admittedly, they have gone wrong. And that is where we should be asking ourselves, how did we get it wrong? Mm. But the creating of special uh, purpose vehicle to deal with issues related to... the modules to are SPVs. <laughs> special, special purpose ventures. Look, did we have special but initiative for was cassava or not? The no, no. Did gates. we have special initiative for cassava or oh, not? Of course, we had we had them. Good, but but that why did we do that? But that government didn't say. Why did we SPVs. do that? Why did we do that? Well, don't we have cassava farmers that, in, answer, in your hometown? The answer is known to you. So we should have given those money to your cassava farmers. Oh yes, why not? Exactly. Yes. So I'm saying that it is not entirely wrong mm -hmm. to identify an issue, to identify a problem, and to say that look. The ministry is overburdened. The ministry cannot be focusing its attention on every matter. So let's hive off this and deal with it and create an institution to deal with it. There is labor department, you are aware. You people, are again going there. People used to go to labor department for jobs. You are again going there. No, there's people used to go to labor department for jobs. Why do you go to labor department for jobs? Why do you hear people say they are going to labor department Thank you, thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Now, so, now, doc, now doc, tell me. Yes, we know, for example, that... Uh, the Agams group for, for a particular period of the year owes in excess of about uh, 55 million or so. Um, uh, the, the, the Just Born group has yeah. about uh, 141 million or so, blah, blah. Now the government is saying they should refund, and they have agreed and they are refunding. I don't believe that. You, you don't believe that? No. Ah. Okay. Now, now the point I'm making is, we are the same people who will complain if government, the manner in which government goes about it, ends up bringing judgment debt. We are the same people who will complain. Yeah. How else do you want the government to go about this situation? Okay. For, for these contracts, the government, I think, has the right to abrogate these contracts because these people have defaulted uh, in their, um, well, their part of their ob obligations. For example, there were conditions, precedent. Uh, the just one group had to pre-finance some of these contracts. It did not. 
it had to make payments into the provident fund. It did not. So there's basis for cancelling these contracts. The government should stop passing the back. Have you read the contracts? In, in every contract, it's not the case that uh, any, any default, default. Is, mm -hmm. is automatic, you know, Trigger to for repudiation of the contract. Well, they let them take the government to court. If, if the government has abrogated... If they do, that is where you're going to have the judgment then. That's the question I'm asking. How else do you want the government to go about it so that... In the end, it doesn't contract judgment debt for you to come and complain again. I, I have said uh, the first step taken by the president is good because we lose money daily to these contracts. These modules that Herbert mentioned, some of, just, some of them are, were just conduits for siphoning funds to uh, these so-called groups. When did they uh, garner this expertise mm -hmm. in filmmaking mm -hmm. and all that? They were just countries for siphoning government funds. And only three groups, the Zira group, the Agams group, the Just One group. You still find this Just and One And you realize that any time you say conduit or Egbert has said conduit, you don't even provide circumstantial evidence to connect, to, to consolidate what you're saying. Ah, you know, there's a lot. Of, with mathematical accuracy. No, 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 but even in this, no, I'm saying, I'm saying even in the report. It, and yes. you don't say anything beyond even that. Even in the mm -hmm. report. But, 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 but this is not a court. If, yeah. if, if you go to court, we will provide circumstantial evidence. So you're, 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 you're saying that the public should not attach no, 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 the level of seriousness that they attach to court. No, 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 no. To this discussion. No, no, no. That's what you're saying. No, to the answer. You're saying that the standards here are so low. I don't know why I go like that. I'm surprised. Okay, please. Please allow us to finish. Allow us to finish. For instance, you talked about the RLG contract where you were supposed to train 15,000 youths. Now, if you haven't identified 15,000 youths, why do you advance yeah. 25 million for the training of them? You get me. Is, it not, is this not a conduit for siphoning government funds, which eventually come back to these government My officials? question is, how should the government go about it? What I is your prescription? I have said that, uh, that the president should bite harder. Okay? The report. The bite data, harder. I want to hear what? Specific. How? We have to see the prosecutions coming. We have to see the refunds of, of interest. Prosecution of who? Ah, but the, the, the report, the GIDA report made recommend. Haven't you read the report? It made recommendations of prosecution. It's, 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 yeah. yeah, it's six months. People old. have been charged. Yeah. yeah. on bail. Really? Yes. yes. About that. People have been charged. Have okay. they been arraigned before? How about, how about the big men? They're on police and quite bail. So yeah. which, um, who, who do you Abu want to Abu is complaining. He said he didn't have authority to sign a contract more mm, than 20,000. So who was signing the two million contract? A consultant mm. was hired mm. to mm. provide service. He was paid two million. No work done. Who who is the minister who signed that contract? I want to see the president bite harder. Mm. Let them make the refunds with interest. Government advances money to you for no work done, and you are giving one year to pay make quarterly. This is a joke. It's a joke. Let them make the refunds immediately with interest, and let me see the agreement thereof. Mm. These are the things we are talking about. Otherwise, this is just some window dressing to uh, appease maybe some media men. Okay. Oh, why no, are no. you changing your stance? Initially, you, you commended no, 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 government no, no, and the president. Again. Again. You allow him to no, 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 badly no, no, influence you. This is a number of parliament. You allow him to badly influence you. The translation of the contract is good. We are here, but I told you I was going to give you two minutes. Now, first, starting with Egbert, what do you want to see? Let me, before I even go to that area. You see, because of this contract issue you raised, I think among the three of us, four of us, we know that in contract law, there's a principle called affirmation of contract, where when a party to a contract has breached the contract, you, the other side, who is complaining, you have the right to terminate immediately. But if you do not terminate and allow the, the breach to go on, you acquiesce, you have affirmed the very contract that has been breached. So when the MPP, for example, says that there can be actions in court which can lead to judgment death. This is where that, that, that is the principle that the, par the party is talking about. That if the examples that government affirm the contracts, notwithstanding the, the breaches, then we have a problem. Now, beyond that, the solution is simple. There are bigger fishes in government. Those, Madam A, Miss B, their names are littered, yeah. you know. In the mm -hmm. they, they, yes, they are, but when they start talking and they mention names, we want to see the president say, Minister A, Consultant B, you, get out of government and Attorney General, please roll this person, minister or whatever, over to the courts for prosecution. Otherwise, you see, 
we all these ordinary people who were, okay. if you like, uh, 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 conduits. You see, there are examples where some of them will tell you that, oh, these monies I collected and shared them with somebody. Those things will come up. And when they come up, let nobody pretend that they haven't heard. The fundamental problem in this country, again, I'll, and I'll come to it, okay. is Article 88 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. We should allow private prosecutions in this republic. Thank you. Mama Yaga. Well, I mean, what, what, me... what should we, what should we you know, and expect to see in the coming days to conclude this matter in a way that satisfies the generality of the Ghanaian people whose monies you have, you know, rightly, you know, concluded have been given out wrongly and so the people should pay back? First and foremost, let me state here that government is not proud of what happened in the Jida oh. affair. I'm stating that as a matter of fact. Government is not <coughs> proud of what happened in the whole Jida, you know, institutional it's arrangement shameful, right? and what happens. We appreciate the fact that it started with a good intention. We believe that many young people in this country benefited from the Jida arrangement. Now we discover that there were administrative lapses and that some people did take advantage of those administrative lapses. We are fixing the problem. We are putting in place the legal arrangements. We are investigating. Uh, Yoko is looking at it. Those who need to refund money are going to refund the money. We are terminating contracts that we, based on evaluation, come to a conclusion that there's no value for money. He's talking about big fishes. Yes. You don't catch big fishes at the shore. <laughs> oh, you go deep Sharks out. and big fishes <laughs> are deep in the sea. In the flags so you, you have to swim. Okay. Swim and get there oh. to be able to catch them. Oh. That is what we are doing. This result we are to probing, literary devices will not help We are, we are probing and probing further. And as we probe and get deeper and deeper, if we indeed find the sharks and the big fishes that you are so concerned about. Are you doing I want to assure are you, doing you I want to assure you that John Draman Mama will not hesitate <laughs> to deal with any big fish that he finds as he swims deeper and deeper you into use, sea you on the Jira issue. For this he, 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 I'll tell you, I'll tell, 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 tell you why. I'll tell you why. Why is this man not allowing me to talk? I'll tell you why some are skeptical oh, about the oh, processes. No, no. Mm -hmm. Because of how it's mm -hmm. all started. Even when Manasseh has already begun the investigations, the, the, the attitude, you know, towards the whole thing. There are those who are saying the government was sitting on all of these reports by the national security and everything that indicted a number of people and was clear, very unequivocal un un about the rot. And yet government didn't do anything. It took... It took the investigations, you know, to now bring pressure, civil society organizations, and you, members of parliament, there are some who are very disappointed in you that you didn't do your job of, of checking how the public space is, 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 uh, dissipated. is, is, is dissipated, to, 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 so to speak. So some are saying, for example, the, the president now should now be apologizing to Ghanaians for, even prov uh, for the waste of time and providing that avenue for fraud and that this is ineptitude that ought not to be celebrated. No, that's not true. You see, there's one thing that people have to realize. This country, by its constitution and its existing legal framework, has a well-structured accountability mechanism. Albeit, albeit that often the accountability mechanism discovers the act after, after. it has happened. All these things that we're discussing would have been found out because at the end of whatever period, the Auditor General would have gone into all these transactions to establish whether they were done in accordance with the procurement laws and etc. and reported on them, and Parliament would have looked into all these issues. The report started about activities in the field, people using ghost names in order to improperly take advantage of the system, and make money. That was how it started. Which had already come to the attention of no, the people no, at the helm of affairs. No, no, that was how it started. And government started the investigation. Now, the more structural issues... Started the investigation oh, because yeah, it had now come into the media. Now, 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 listen, listen. The other issues that caught public attention was what was perceived to be the, the unfairness 
in, in the relationship between the service providers and the individual beneficiaries. You recall that under the NPP. My point is that let, let me, National let me, Security let me, was sitting let me, on the let report. Me, let me, the Ministry of Youth and Sports oh, was sitting on the report. Oh. No, none of Which them, report? None of them. Which report? Those reports. That there was no report. No, there was no report. Three separate no, 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 investigations have been done. No, no, no. no. This National Security Investigation was in relation to a number of coordinators in the various districts That's how who, were alleged, began. Who, were, who were alleged to have opened accounts with rural banks. Is that okay? Those are the those people were, who those are were, those were, now. Yeah, those were, my, I mean, relatively, is that okay? Relative to the subsequent investigation and what was found out. Those were specific instances. Now, it was the revelations. And then later on, there were attempts to even probe the relationship between the service providers and the beneficiaries, i.e. The, 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 the fund that they were supposed to make a contribution into, and then the fact that, you know, the administrat administrative charge was was much much higher than what individual beneficiaries hmm. were getting okay. you know initially those were the things that we were all you know paying attention to but subsequently we started questioning the very contracts themselves right and that was when we set up a ministerial committee so That's, there's no okay. don't create the impression that people were trying to hide anything at any stage in the investigations Yes, you can fault us. That you are saying you are saying that, for example, if the media had not started looking into the matter, and I'm talking about, but that, what is the role of the media? What is the role of the media? This the role of the role of media in a democracy. Uh -huh. The role of the media to, yes. brought this to the public. Let me give you the credit, mm. if that's what you're asking for. We give you the credit for playing a role in drawing attention to the issues. That is the role of the Thank media. Thank you very much, Mahama Yarga. We will take a break here. We'll be back. <laughs> Uh, with the discussion, the other part of the discussion. This is News File, your most authoritative news analysis show. You welcome back to News File. My guests, Egbert Fable, Mahama Yarega, uh, Dr. Marcus Sibe, Yabua, and Abraham Amalba. Some of your messages. Uh, Fred sends this one from Malaysia, and he says that the opinion. The option to retrieve the money is yet another delay tactic which will conveniently drag till 2016 and then die off in the most unlikely event that the NDC retains power. Prosecuting those involved in the Suba, Jida, etc. scandals is supposed to serve as a deterrent which is in line with the spirit and letter of our criminal code. Eric Arthur in Canada writes, is a Maliba saying the Mahama led government saw that there was no legal framework and went ahead to pay huge monies to these uh, robbers? This is simply an act of create, loot, and share. Uh, Kweku Owusu Mensa sends this from Germany. He says, How come the NDC knew that there was no law in setting up NYEP but went ahead to change it to GEDA? Oh, I see. The NDC saw that loophole and they began to loot the money. Gideon in Wa, uh, from Germany, we go to Wa. He is saying, mm -hmm. listening to Mama Yarga and Amalba this morning makes me feel very sad. What at all has Ghanaians, uh, have Ghanaians done, that's what you mean to say, to deserve this? Do we still live in the slavery days? Why are you asking that? Why should we work and pay our hard-earned monies for people to spend prosperity will surely judge all of us. Uh, Yamusa, again, please give some other people the opportunity. Michael Oklu writes, Jida was just a populist machinery to project the government during the 2012 election. As a result, due diligence was not done. It's a shame how our government gambles with our monies <coughs> and future. Spike in Ohio, USA, says something. I perfectly agree with Egbeck. Everything Mahama is doing uh, to deal with the Jida rod is cosmetic. Nothing or nobody will be convicted. They should stop wasting our ears. 2016 is around the corner, and Ghanaians will show them the exit when the time comes. And Abraham Bokite says, Tackling corruption is not only about cancelling contracts. It's about naming and shaming, prosecuting and cancelling those illegal uh, monies wrongly paid to certain individuals with interest. Honorable Yarga, you can't defend this indefensible act. Thank you very much uh, for your messages. And I want to know from, from my producers why all the messages here, I can't even see one of them that is uh, 
That is that is that is uh, praising or applauding what is going on. <laughs> oh, but the honourable minister himself has said our government is not proud. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just interested in knowing that <laughs> that's that's all that is coming, anyway. and that gives you an idea of how Ghanaians in general are not excited about what has gone on in this particular. But you see, we've not situation. also sat here to defend any. A process that has gone on. Okay. Both of us here have you, condemned who said what Nahu has gone on. Ah. Who said Nahu Kwasam? Right. It's a defense. It's not a defense. It's to uh, say that the rough started somewhere <laughs> when, to where we are today. You, you have been speaking about the processes to retrieve the money exactly. and punish those, those yes. who may yes. be found culpable. Nahu Thank you very much. Now let's go, let's go to the NPP's um, you know, marking scheme <coughs> and score sheets of how John Mahama and his government performed in 2013. The government had labeled it responsible, accountable, and transparent uh, 2013. The NPP held a press conference and stated, among other things, the removal of util utility tariffs uh, and calling that what you cannot call a better Ghana agenda that was uh, pers uh, pr pursued in the period spoke about the public debt that went very high. Uh, for example, they mentioned that in 2013, government borrowed at least 1.2 billion Ghana cities almost every month from domestic sources, <coughs> so that by the end of 2013, our total debt stock stood at over 23 billion United States dollars, rising significantly from a stock of only 8 uh, million eight billion in 2008. They say this certainly is not good governance. They speak about inflation, also that that went up. Uh, that could not be properly managed from what mm. was achieved earlier. They spoke about also a proposal for the freeze on uh, public wages in 2014. All of the things that happened, you know, cascading or culminating into all of those. They speak about depreciation of the city. Uh, adverse terms of trade, uh, credit ratings, some of which were very poor within the period, contractors that were not paid, service provided inclu providers, including school feeding, caterers who were not paid, teacher trainee allowances that were stopped, uh, among many, many other issues that they raised. So I'd like to uh, start with the man who understands these figures very well. Um, your... your your verdicts, and I found that the comparisons that you make, you trace them to 20, 2008. Why, why, why that comparison? Uh, okay, not exactly because in the uh, with the total debt situation, of course, uh, the reference was being made to where we were. As of Even in the agri sector, that's what you did. You went to two thousand and eight. That's the point of comparison. Yeah, because uh, we had the MPP in government in two thousand. You are assessing a man's one year in office. Oh, this man, this man has been vice president for four years. Okay, go on. Uh, yeah. uh, so he's not new to the job. Matter of fact, what had happened was um, on, I think, 7th of uh, January, uh, the NDC held a, a public forum to sort of explain how the Better Ghana agenda had manifested in 2013. And uh, for a year where the president himself admitted we were in first gear and that. He had been the most unfortunate president with so many challenges. I, I, I thought they should have spared us that explanation of how the better Ghana agenda manifested. So we just sought to portray to the Ghanaian people that 2013 had been a difficult year. And the way you assess an economy is to look at the macroeconomic indicators as well as the cost of living, which has mm. gone up for everybody. But, but the word 2014, or the phrase 2014 being a difficult year. No, 2013. 2013 being, ha having been a difficult year, is not to be heard from you the first time. <laughs> the government had admitted that. Yeah, so why did they seek to explain to us how the Better Ghana Agenda mm. manifested in 2013? Even in the difficult times, that's what they no. said. And then uh, uh, why we res responded was that they, they sought to portray to Ghanaians that uh, the economy did very well. And, but all the fundamentals have remained weak uh, in, in this regime. For example, because of our revenue shortfalls in 2013, we saw all manner of taxes, taxes on condoms, <laughs> taxes on cutlasses and machetes, 
virtually every good that could be taxed was taxed in 2013. To add um, insult to injury, we, we saw an increase in the VAT by 2.5% at the uh, uh, tail end of the year. And the manner in which even that introduction came to Parliament, you know, had all sorts of questions to it. It was smuggled uh, uh, through the back door late and nobody will be given opportunity to speak to it even in Parliament. So you have increased all manner of taxes. Utility rates have gone up. Water, electricity in 2013. All of uh, uh, utility rates have gone up. Then um, petroleum products, price of petroleum products. Just two days ago I had uh, uh, petrol prices had gone up by 6%. Now nobody even cares when the, the, these things go up because we've seen increases, about six increases in the last year alone. The cumulative effect is about 20% increase in uh, uh, petrol prices. Then uh, our currency, for example, our currency has depreciated by over 20%. I don't know, I don't uh, get dollars, but if you, ha you get any and you have attempted to exchange, I think now it exchanges for about 2.3 uh, Ghana like 2.2 going. Yeah, yeah, those of you who get these dollars. So a banker doesn't get dollars. No, no, I'm paid in CDs. So yeah. So if yeah, you, I, I don't get anybody sending me dollars. That's what. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Now, the, the depreciation of the currency has implications. Most of our businesses import goods. Some people bring in goods, and by the time they turn around to go import, but they had lost thousands of uh, dollars uh, in exchange rates lost. So these things have gone on, people are suffering. And then you come to tell us you are going to give us a manifestation, uh, explain to us how the Better Ghana agenda manifested itself in 2013. If you take, for example, inflation, which is uh, a measure of uh, the general price level, you, you would recall uh, an era when they used to talk about single-digit inflation. I'm, I'm sure you used to uh, hear yeah. that one. All right. uh, there's a minister. There's a minister. But it was facts, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, if now we've gone away from single-digit inflation, shouldn't we point uh, it out to Ghanaians? Now the inflation rate is 13.5 percent. The implications thereof is that the cost of living has gone up by about 14 percent if you relate to any end of 2012 to end of 2013. You said the inflation rate is what? 13.5 percent. I thought 13.2. Point five. I checked this one in Bank of Ghana before. I was okay. 13.5 percent as at the end of 2013. These has imp uh, these have implications. If an investor is coming into the country, he's looking at the inflation rate. He's looking at the exchange rate because eventually he's going to remit his uh, uh, funds back in foreign currency. So, I I, I thought the government should have spared us that uh, uh, seminar, public forum, because this has been a terrible year in terms of our economic management. As a matter of fact, the credit rating agencies, three of them, Fitch, Standard & Poor's, Moody, all of them have downgraded our credit rating. Our credit rating... Now there's a third, uh, fourth or third bigger force uh, credit rating agency that's come up from various countries come together. So okay. we're going to see uh, better ratings, okay. so to speak. Now our credit rating has been downgraded from B plus to B. There are implications there too. Now, if we go out to borrow internationally, we pay a higher interest rate. Matter of fact, the euro bond that was uh, issued in 2013 attracted a rate of close to 8%, whereas Nigeria had a rate of about 6.5%. So the cost of borrowing has gone up. And the government has piled on more debt. As at the end of uh, President Kofor's administration, our total debt was $8 billion, Ghana, uh, $8 billion. As we speak, as at the end of 2013, the total debt is $23 billion. Mm. So in four years or five years, you've added $15 billion to the debt stock. The implications are that every year, this 2014, we are going to pay $6 billion Ghana cities in interest repayments, principal and interest repayments alone. So it doesn't uh, free up money for the uh, social sector. It doesn't free up money for us to import essential drugs. You recall that uh, HIV drugs uh, in the past year it got to a point that these couldn't come in because mm. we didn't have the money. You're, say, you're saying because of all of these negatives, all of the they economic should not, mess, all they should the not have mess. held that forum. Absolutely. What I, think what I want to know is that yeah. what particularly did they talk about at the forum yeah. that you think is not factual? 
as yeah. far as the progress that they, they, they spoke about, yeah. in, in, even in the difficult times, is concerned. They spoke about, for example, in the area of education, they spoke about uh, 25,000 children that have been removed from the streets into schools. Uh, you know, they, they also uh, spoke about, uh, about uh, 3,000 ghost names or 3 million ghost names or so. 3,000 ghost names that have been removed. Yeah, from two uh, years. Yes. You know, from the payroll. Mm -hmm. They talk about, even in, still in education, uh, students or people who didn't have textbooks. Now, they used to share one textbook per to three uh, students. Now, each uh, pupil can have three of the core textbooks that they need. They talk about, uh, what do you call it, about 100,000 laptops distributed <laughs> and all of that. Are they facts? Uh, Samson, let's get serious in this country, okay? Have you forgotten the air when we're told that they had removed, what was it, 1,700 schools under trees? The current budget, which I have here, says that the number of schools under trees that has been removed is less than 1,000. But we used to hear about 1,700. Have you forgotten we're told that oh, 1.6 million jobs were created in the first year? Of the Mills administration. Later on, the Minister for Employment, E.T. Mensah, wouldn't have anything to say on it. These figures they bandied about are incorrect. Matter of fact, I had uh, uh, listed some up here. Fifi Kwete said uh, uh, the inflation rate was 12%, and even that he tried to explain it away. That's what I'm telling you, it's 13.5. He said the currency had depreciated by 5%. The currency in the last year has depreciated by over 20%. And they will not uh, stop talking about this single spine. You are paying teachers and nurses, and then you keep on uh, complaining about it. What is wrong with paying uh, teachers and nurses well? So that every time, the source of all our problems is that oh, it's because of the single spine. And tell, ask the ordinary teacher or the nurse that the salaries they are getting right now, is there anything uh, good to write home about? They talk about eurobond oversubscription. I said, goodness me, if you go sell any bad product, and then you, have, you get so many people subscribing to it. Does it mean uh, your country is attractive? There is nothing to say that if there's excess demand, which we call, we call oversubscription. And how do you sell uh, bad products if people will buy? If I brought some, <laughs> if I, if I brought some uh, uh, phones from China, from China, <laughs> right now, I have phones from China, 20 Ghana cities, and I put them outside here. You see the number of people coming to buy them. Does it mean that the phones are good? Okay. Now, just hold on for me. Now, uh, Mama Yaga, yes, yes. for example, so uh, my mm -hmm. okay. Dr. Baumiatu has been speaking, and he spoke a bit about the economy, and he said, quote, what is baffling to me and most Ghanaians is that this NDC government is the first government in the history of Ghana to have access to oil revenues and has also had access to more financial resources in terms of tax and non-tax revenues, as well as borrowing more than any other government in Ghana's history. Yet, it is finding it difficult to pay its bills. This is why Ghanaians are like, asking, you know, mini uh, <laughs> uh, what, 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 what is happening and all of that. He says this is, this is very worrying, and this government should not be heard talking about, you know, difficult times and so on and so forth. What do you say? Well, I think fundamentally, let's start from the figures, like you rightly mentioned. Some of the figures may not be where we targeted them to be. They may not be where we targeted them to be. But they don't tell a story of lack of progress. That's the most important thing. There's no way... Progress under this in sun, adversity, you mean? There's no way mm. under this sun that you will convince me that an economy that grew a GDP of 7.4 did not make progress. For God's sake, how much did you want to grow? That when you grow at 7.4, you will say that there was no progress. We admit that there are challenges. That the debt stock is relatively high, but we know what caused it. One, we identified that because we have become a lower middle income economy, the entire financing arrangement of the economy has to also change. And that's where we are having a problem. The concessional loans, the grants, and all those things that used to come in to cushion 
the Kufour administration so that their debt stock was lower. It's no longer available to today's Ghana. Well, well, says you under, have under, under, money. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. I'm, I will, we will get to that. Under President John Ramani Mahama. It's no longer available. Now, we have embarked on major... We have embarked on major infrastructure projects. Not, not it. Yeah. Mm. We have embarked on major infrastructure projects. And it costs money. We, we, the dam that we yes. have constructed, it costs money. Mm -hmm. Every year, cocoa money that should have come into the national kitty mm -hmm. is going to defray the cost of the construction of we. That money is not available to us. The same way, because the gas pipeline was interrupted in terms of the supply of gas to Ghana, we've had to resort to other forms of financing, I mean, other uh, forms of uh, energizing our thermal plants. That costs money. Hmm. And traditionally, we have been used in an arrangement where we have been subsidizing heavily electricity, water, everything subsidized. That also cost money to government. And especially last year, because of the energy crisis, we spent so much supporting VRA and Co. to be able to power these thermal plants to generate electricity. Then, of course, they always say we shouldn't mention it, but it's a reality the that position. the last day, I mean the last weeks, if I may put it that way, when leaving office, mm -hmm. President Kufu bequeathed to us a commitment to implement single spine. And we started the process. And of course, anytime you conclude President an agreement... Kufo, President Kufu had a manageable timeline to that, right? Oh, I mean, the point is that... You decided to The point is that he had, he had eight years, mm. he didn't do it. He waited till the weeks yeah. when he was leaving. But was no, he still president? And, didn't he, and, he, and he announced He didn't it. impose no, on you no, no, with no, a no, gun no, to no, your no, neck no, that no, you ought no. to implement it in the manner that you decided to no, go about no, it. No, no, no. As for the manner, is that okay? Those were dictated by the exigencies of the times, the negotiating abilities of the parties, and etc. I mean, you were here last year. How many strike actions didn't occur last year? From teachers to doctors to pharmacists, almost every category. Local government workers, they were all on strike last year, demanding their pound of flesh, demanding that arrears should be paid them immediately. You recall. And we spend most of the time trying to manage these strikes. But the labor deserve is high. Yes. So the, the part, Bible even yes, says that. Yes. We, 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 we don't think yeah. the Ghanaians don't deserve it. Yeah. And that's why we gave it to them. Yeah. But it comes at a cost. Mm. And so those of us who discuss what we gave without appreciating that it comes at a cost, and that the cost is a charge on all of us Ghanaians, I think that is where I have an issue. So if you look at all these issues, we look at the finances of the country, and we are putting in place measures first to deal with revenue mobilization, first to ensure that there's prudent management of expenditure. Is that okay? And then also we're introducing strategies to deal with how to finance the economy. And those were the measures that we implemented the whole of last year and are continuing this year. Of course, a few uh, taxes were introduced in addition to existing taxes. But we agreed at that time that, yes, we needed to stabilize the fiscal regime. And so we introduced the fiscal stabilization levy. And we introduced a number of uh, import duties. But those had sunset clauses. They were just meant for a particular period. And when the situation, the fiscal regime improved, they will be uh, taken out. We uh, had to uh, increase the value-added tax. Of course, the minority had issues mm -hmm. with that, but that's normal. Minority will always have an issue with any tax regime. I mean, it's, it's, it's good to, to appear or position yourself and posture as a defender of, you know, the like pest. Like when the pest of, the of, 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 of consumers. Service tax. Oh, yeah. please, yeah. please. <laughs> I remember. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we all remember. Yeah. And we also remember recently yeah, all yeah, the posturing yeah. around it's good value and tax, yeah, tax yeah. increments and that kind of thing.
you will remember yeah, get fund yes, get fund yeah, and the opposition of, of the yeah, NPP the yeah the VAT and yeah. the opposition of the NPP and, 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 and I can tell you yeah. and I can tell so you how, remember all that. how how yes. how how the designing Ghanaian <coughs> finds this uh, mm -hmm. this uh, yeah. have your way have your say thing yeah. very yeah. sad and depressing yeah. that you are supposed to be in the house and represent and represent what is their real conscience and concerns yeah. and yet you turn everything to MPP and DC politics. Yeah. No, no, that's, 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 that's uh, not the best approach. But the, the truth also of democratic arrangements is that the people are given the opportunity to choose their representatives. And, and those representatives are in parliament, and they are largely NDC. Conclude NPP. on your substantive so, issue of the yes. economy, yeah. So, so basically, those were the challenges. Now, if you look at the financial reforms that the finance minister has put in place, it will definitely lead to some more discipline in terms of uh, government public uh, expenditure, the gift miss program and all that, that he has put in place. Now, if you look at the shift from short domestic borrowing to long, medium-term borrowing from the international financial market, it is all aimed at reducing the interest rates on loans because one of the problems of our debt now is interest on loans. It's huge. And indeed, it is telling on the economy. And so we are prudently trying to borrow externally from long-term bonds and use that to offset the local short-term domestic borrowing. And in the process, to also catalyze the economy by making sure that the domestic banks have money that they can lend to the, the private uh, sector. Revenue mobilization, yes, that is where the challenge is. We haven't met all our targets, but... Um, some of the measures that we have introduced with the sunset clauses and etc., hopefully will help us to deal with the, the, the revenue mobilization targets. And we believe that these ratings that have been put out there are based on a perception that the measures that we have put in place would not you know, stabilize the, the, the existing situation. And we are saying, no, no, the measures will stabilize the existing situation. Right. If you look at the, the, the implementation of the automatic tariff adjustment uh, <laughs> program. I mean, clearly, it, it's, it's enabling government not to put in the level of subsidies that the government used to put in terms of you know, e energy generation and etc. So government spending there has been largely reduced. Mm. I mean, individually, at the level of government ministers, government appointees, measures are being taken to cut down on waste to cut down on government spending and, and all that. So we believe that if you look at the three areas, revenue mobilization, uh, fiscal discipline, and then also managing our, our, our debt stock and then managing the financing of the economy, right. so much has been achieved. Okay. When we held the forum and we discussed progress in the social and other sectors that you have issues, you, you should challenge the statistics, like he indicated. I mean, in education, in healthcare, and so many other areas, I mean, clearly, the statistics show that we are making progress. Yes, that the fundamentals, some of them are being challenged. We are not doubting that, and we have never run away from that. What we are saying is that we are boldly dealing with those issues. Uh, but, but, but you see, let, last point that I want to make, and any time that we make this point, they say, ah, and he thought I was going to make that, that point. But election me, petition. Election petition. petition. Oh. Why? <laughs> Why? I listened to Baumia. I read what he said that we took Ghanaians on a rough ride. He, Baumia, mm -hmm. took all of us on a rough ride for eight months of the 12 oh, months. You call a court action. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ride, thank, you. Eight thank, months. You, thank you very Why? much. Why? Lawyer. If you bring a frivolous action, mm. is it not a rough ride? Okay. A, a, a frivolous, a frivolous court thank action. You, thank you, a frivolous court action. No, 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 thank, it's a rough ride. Thank you, thank you gentlemen. <laughs> now, 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 Egbert, <laughs> he's saying, and that is what government wants people to understand, that this is a government that may have suffered such an adversity economically than the previous regime, and yet in that adversity, this progress, you know, has been made, have been made. Hmm. You're saying that, why? Uh, it shouldn't be measured on that year alone, but should be taken back to when they took over the reins of government? You see, but, 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 but that is it. 
That is fair, equitable, and reasonable. That is the correct thing to do. It's a review of the one year. Yeah, of course, of course. But you see, but you see, let me, let me say. You see, I said earlier on in the program that this government is a communication government. I just listened to my very good friend and brother to my left. Ah, it's communication be what? <laughs> oh, yes. this, these meekly. are facts. Meekly. These are facts. Meekly. So that those who are not discerning will be charmed. You see, let me, let me say something. This is a government that is day by day abdicating its responsibilities to the people of Ghana. Removal of, of subs, uh, uh, what do you call it, allowances for teacher trainees mm -hmm. and all those things. So government is getting smaller in its financial responsibilities to the people. But government is getting bigger in its expenditure. It is a conundrum. It is a conundrum. You are abdicating your financial responsibilities to your people on a day-by-day -day basis. You are increasing taxes. To do what? To spend on yourself? To spend on scams like Jida? That, that, that is the conundrum for me. You, now, you, you heard my very good friend to my left say well, you that we have built Bui. You say you your friend. So, Coco money okay. is being used to pay Bui. So, well, there's a shortfall. So, we have to find money. Ah, but is Bui not in Ghana? Are we the, the automatic tariff adjustments that we are paying? We are paying parity for what has been put in Bui. So why should anybody when, complain when that, that we have built no, when, when did that start? No, no, no. You when see, when, when you said that, no, when I did cringed. That start? Well, no, when did that start? I cringed. That's a good no, question. When, when did that start? When did that start? Oh, when did, when did since we, we came on stream. When? Since we got into the three national grid. Yes, but you, you, no, we borrowed yeah. money. Thank you. But did, that, you, that, did, that you did you borrow the money? Did you borrow the money with understanding that immediately it comes on stream, we will pay? It is over a period. Then you come and tell us that, oh, the president has ordered that Air conditioners in his office and every office in the plaza should be turned off, yes. and that seven. funds should be used. Cost saving. It's cosmetic mascara. Yeah, cost saving. Oh, cosmetic mascara. This is what piles up the bills. No, 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 no. This is what piles up the bills. Please allow him. You see, please, 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 you see, the fundamentals are there. We have a tax expert as our finance minister. He, and he's a gentleman I, 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 I respect and like so much because. To a large extent, you won't call him your ordinary NDC economic propagandist. No, you won't call him that. He works hard. And I expect that during his tenure, the tax regime in this country will become better than it has ever been. But again, what you see is that government sits like a fat cat, says, Mama Yariga, um, um, Samson, Honorable, and Amaliba, they have known addresses. So it is easy to increase tariffs. They will pay. Oh, everybody, uh, mobile phone penetration in Ghana is very high. So let's increase communication tax. It is lazy. We need to do far more than we are doing. And I want to see this finance minister leave office, bequeath hmm. Ghana. <laughs> you, <laughs> when, when, when they are increasing communication tax, yes. and at the same time, they are, they are laying out, uh, what do you call it, is it a, a 780 mm -hmm. uh, kilos of uh, fiber, fiber optic, optic. Yes. To, to improve the situation? Is that not commentary? No, no, it's not commentary. It is, it is very cheap and lazy. You see, the day, the day President Mahama was captured on the front page of the Daily Graphic quite recently, virtually, literally, you know, cringing before the Chinese foreign minister <laughs> that the Chinese loan... They should expedite action on it. I said, hey, we are in trouble. You are asking for a loan. Mm -hmm. You have already even made certain committal payments. You know, we, we are making payments for a Chinese loan. And then the Chinese foreign minister comes to Ghana. You are begging him to expedite action on the loan. Holy Moses. What did we do as a nation? Where did we go wrong? I mean, it, you see, first of all, national pride. When I read it, I said, no. I know that we're always begging for loans and the rest. But this style, this style, you have paid money or commitment fees up front, and the people are delaying. Then you come and tell them, that, please, I beg you, hurry up with the loan. It is not decent. It is not proper. And then... What is the alternative? What should oh, we have said? Please. It's not even the penalty please. of the foreign... But Chinese that is the point. But that is the point. Actually, okay. You see, and then we get... Who we get, we get that function. The, 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 yes. the Chinese yeah. finance minister should come to... That function that was held. The foreign minister... The foreign minister represents your country in all respects. Mama, mama, mama. Let me go. It's not from the Chinese government. Now, you don't know how the Chinese system works. You go on, and then we get a lecture. 
of the president's 100 days in office, and uh, no less a person like Mr. PVOB, who has been advisor to every NDC government, starting from even his very active working days in the PNDC. He gave the lecture. Okay. And said that, and said that government has laid the foundation for people-centered development. Wow. NDC 1, NDC 2 came and went. President Mills' interregnum came. We are in the advent of Mahama. And now, 2014, is when the NDC, as a chain, is looking Ghanaians in the eyes and telling Ghanaians that it has now finished laying the foundation for people-centered development. I mean, you see, this is not fair. This is like taking Ghanaians for granted. I thought that by now we will be told that let, let they have hear. finished and have roofed you know, <laughs> the concept. Let so me we should move into the, into the new Amalba. economic order. Let, let me hear Amava. Oh, but and, I have uh, additional points. So this single spine thing. Yes. This single spine okay. thing. Quickly, quickly converse them and then I'll yes, hear Amava. Yes, I'll get to it. Look, look. <laughs> when single spine and things were coming up under President Mills, we saw the NDC government arrange with policemen to come to parliament yeah. to sit down and watch the opposition, uh, opposition MPP that they are going to oppose single spine. They don't want you to get single spine. You, you use all the populism to say that you, you are the ones doing single spine. Yeah, we did it. Now, because you don't know the formula to sustain single spine, you are crying saying President Kufu in his last days shouldn't have done that. Why? Was he not president? Was he illegible? Why don't you go to the Supreme Court to say that that single spine announcement that president was unconstitutional because he was not president of Ghana. So the constitution should declare it, the, the Supreme Court should declare that his action as unconstitutional. Uh -huh. Then the Ghanaian worker will know who is in, who works for him. Okay. Working for the people. Thank you, Egbert. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Thank you, Egbert. And uh, Amaba, if we can hear you briefly on this, on this, and uh, we'll This go one for, is not communication. We, we, All he has said is not communication. Oh, we, no, 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 no. We, we, this, we is, take, this is we take, this we take a, a very final break. <laughs> But I wish you, you wouldn't do what uh, Gustav uh, Quasing is saying. He says, this NPP-NDC blame game is seriously sinking this country. Um, go on. The whole press conference is a blame game. So we cannot uh, <laughs> sit here and say we will not do blame Let's game. Let's say we shouldn't discuss it. <laughs> you see, their press statement or press conference was disingenuous in the sense that I expected them to compare the first one year. We wouldn't take lessons from you. <laughs> we will not take lessons President from you how to organize a press conference. To <laughs> <How>? the <laughs> first one year of President John Kufo. But what did they do? They put together eight years of President John Kufo and compared it one year of John Mahama. Yes. Yes. Kufo vice president. That was, that was, that was disingenuous. President. That was disingenuous. Was Kufo vice president. <laughs> you see, sometimes you don't know what these people want. <laughs> when we touted our single digit inflation status, mm. they told us that it was <laughs> manufactured. <laughs> oh, um, uh, we, we are in cahoot with a uh, uh, statistical service yeah. and we are cooking figures. Yes. Ah, but when we also said we had risen to middle, Ghana had risen to middle income, you yeah. said statistical service was a fraud. Yeah. In fact, you will do us a lot of good if you allow me to flow. Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, you see, today, they have gone back to that same single degree inflation to use it against them because we have lost it now. The question I want to ask them is, do they now believe those figures? That's an explanation. Do they now believe those figures? Please allow him. Take so, mm. these are people who will never see anything good about what another government is doing. And it has shown on this platform. The only person listening to the opposition who has been very constructive in dealing with these matters is Dr. Oseakoto. And I think that if they emulate his style, this analysis of our economy will be situated in a proper context. But to say that prices have increased, yes, it's a fact. To say that ta they have imposed new taxes numerous oh numerous man. taxes oh or new taxes numerous whatever it is because the it's an indication a of a government that is not doing taxes. well as if in 2008 and uh, beyond <laughs> prices never increased no new taxes came in so adriana edibo techino what is this yeah edibo techino mm -hmm. good so that is the point in your time Prices also increased. That, did that mean that your government was not doing well? I have, doing always, well. I have, I have always said that figures mm, are like mini skirts. They do not reveal anything. I am an advocate 
of human index development. Mm -hmm. When I drive and I see that a road is tarred, I say, this is good. The government has done well. You should be told. When I, when I see that a new school has been built, I say, this is good. Because the old lady in my village is not interested in this, your figures that you are banditing around. And also they want to see, that old lady wants to see whether this time around there's a, a grinding mill in his community so that he will not use drudgery to grind his millet. That is the problem for that woman. The water. So, look, Dr. Baumia and his um, <laughs> figures mm -hmm. and banditing them around will not be able to convince the descending people of this country. The people of this country have on two occasions rejected the MPP and I've told the MPP that the policy of the NDC is the best. And so I do not think that these press statements that they have brought and these press conferences would sway anybody at all. Okay. This country is on the proper footing. Thank you very much. Chris Saime Kumasi writes, Honestly, the NPP was charitable in their uh, assessment of John Mahama's government. I pray God grants us all retentive memory come 2016 to kick out the clueless government. Samuel Bryan Boabinga, which he says, this is a government that has spent more money in five years than what President Kufo or President Rawlings spent in each of their eight long years. This is a government that has borrowed more money in five years than what all the uh, previous government <coughs> put together did in 53 years. <laughs> and yet, we do not see any real evidence of what they have done with all our money. Joshua Dankwa uh, in Dunkwa says, the way, the, uh, the way and manner the government increases electricity, uh, water, vats, and so on is not good because government makes only one salary increment in a year. Government should back up. Abraham says, oh, please, tell our information minister to go right, to stop right there. We are tired of this propaganda. It is, is he saying no government faces such challenges? This is real incompetence, but I will not blame them. This is what... Ghanaians voted for. And finally, Kofi Odru Asenso, right from United Kingdom, he says, please tell the government that they have been in power for five years, not one year. <laughs> Mahama inherited an NDC government, not NPP. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Uh, before we take a break, I'd like to tell you that you ought to and have to keep your conversations going with MTN and Toswa. Now, each time you top up with MTN Recharge Voucher, you get free minutes to enjoy longer conversations, no subscriptions required, no long things. Just top up today and enjoy your free minutes on and your free minutes on and the go on the go with MTN uh, in Tosuo. Your bonus minutes can be used for MT, from MTN to MTN calls only. So go on, keep the conversation going. Welcome to the new world, MTN, everywhere you go. And Erata Motors uh, wishes to inform you that they have the best deals. and uh, They've got brand new or slightly used vehicles. And this include Mercedes-Benz, Toyota, Infinity, Range Rover, and you name them. So go to Erata Motors as, at uh, Lagos Avenue, opposite Body Talk, near the GT Bank, is Legon, or call them 244 445 Two six eight or zero two seven seven four eight six eight hundred and get the very best in vehicle deals in town. Thank you. We'll be right back after this break. You're welcome back. Thank you very much for keeping your dials here. This is your multi TV and this is your Joy News channel. You are listening to us on Joy ninety nine point seven FM on radio and over a dozen affiliate stations across the country. And we're also live at myjoyonline.com and multi TV world slash streams. And uh, Kwame Agogi, sorry if that's not exactly how your name is pronounced, Agogi, says, Samson, can you please ask the information minister how a growth of 8% without oil compared to a growth rate of 7.4% <coughs> with oil? can be said to, um, to amount to growth. This is total <laughs> retrogression. Do you agree? No. It depends on the percentage that is growing. The U.S. economy 
is not growing by what? About what, three percent or two percent or something. U.S. No. economy. Don't go there. U.S. economy. No. But stay, by see, by, by see, they stay. they think that is progress. No, stay away so it depends on the size no. of the economy. Yes. Yes. So if 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 twelve years ago, and mm -hmm. the NPP, we had a relatively smaller size economy, and you are growing at eight mm. percent, it doesn't mean that today, mm. with our the size of our economy, if you are growing. At 7.4 percent, you are not doing well. Right. What now, is let me put, say is let that the GDP as at that time right. was lower than today. Um, um, Abdul, Abdul Rahman, um, Abdul Rahman has this question, and I want I want a doc to look at it this way. He says that the NPP is always condemning every initiative of the government without alternative solutions. That yes. is the problem. Yes. In in a minute or two, as we wrap up on this issue, tell me, what what are the alternatives you are offering? I think in the Jida case, which we've discussed today, we have we have finished yeah, with that. I, I give the uh, uh, alternative what the government should do. Now, uh, uh, in the in our current situation, they are in arrears. Service providers are not being paid. Get fund. Road co contractors are not being paid. Government makes these de deductions. These are statutory deductions. So where is the money sitting? Hmm. Somebody is chopping the money because when you have made these deductions, you have to pay the DACF. You have to pay the gets fund. This is not politicking. You have made these deductions and you are not making. Payments. And you can repeat what you just said that somebody is chopping, chopping the money. Money. So, 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 so you are an economist. Where is the money? No, no, you, are, you are an economist. Listen, you are an economist. Where is the money? You, know you, you don't just chop government. You, you know why? You don't just chop money. You know why somebody is uh, 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 chopping the money? See, Whilst these listen, payments careful. are not being made, let me no, no, let me listen, like, listen, while listen, these payments important. are not being made, ah. Zoom Lions contracts are being earned. Payments to the Zoom Lions are being made. No. Payments to the District Assembly Common Fund are in arrears. Statutory payments yes, are not being made. Where you have made the deductions. So, uh, uh, non statutory payments are being made. Non, non payments no. equals no. chopping the money. I think so. I because see. where is the money sitting? <laughs> okay. Where is the money sitting right now? <laughs> now, he had talked about. Uh, I see. Dr. So, so all your assessment is based uh, on this uh, principle. Uh, Any time uh, uh, Dr. Baumia speaks, <laughs> then this is worried. Oh, Any time yeah. Dr. Baumia speaks, yeah. they are worried. The last time he delivered his classic lecture, at the funeral grounds. No, I confirm to Charlie. At the funeral grounds. We have very limited time, and I want you to get some time to be able to talk. Yeah, when you are, when you are spoken mm -hmm. about the uh, Ghana Statistical Set, I recall him saying that there could be a measurement error in the way they were calculating our inflation rate. Soon after he spoke, the IMF intervened and said we have to uh, uh, get a new market basket for calculating the inflation rate. That's mm. what has happened right now in the statistical mm. So even the IMF listens to him mm. when, 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 when he speaks. Okay. So okay. when <laughs> we criticize, <laughs> if, if it's coming from the MPP, then it's not good. Uh, when the IMF let, speaks, let me, then, let me, yes, let me start react. with you, uh, um, Amaba, on this issue. The, the president mm. has been heard making a confession, mm. whether mm. he did it in jests mm. or he was serious about it. It's come to the public, and we are discussing it now. Mm. And... He says that some people are putting pressure on him to sack the Minister of Finance. The Minister of Finance, and I'm even reading some, some article that's now uh, being put forward by uh, a gentleman. And he says that, you know, the, the, the name of Setekwe is synonymous with fiscal discipline. And I took note of that also when Mama Yarga spoke. Mm. In the same sentence, he mentions fiscal discipline. He mentions Setepe. Mm. What, what could be leading to some of these pressures on the president to sack him? I can't tell. But if you ask every Ghanaian, they will point to you one minister the president should sack. <laughs> so it's nothing new. <clears throat> Indeed. As the president sits there, there are some who are also asking them, him to appoint other people. So it's nothing new. The president, indeed, haven't you, the press, asked a question at the Flagstar House? When will he sack some people in the disguise of <laughs> Richard Fulton? Haven't you asked that question? When will he sack some people in the disguise of uh, Richard Fulton? So the man now tries to explain the kind of pressures he has as a president, then it becomes a news item. Yes. Why should he put it It becomes a news item. So for me, 
this is not a confession. Indeed, every descending Ghanaian knows that day in, day out, <laughs> the president is being told to sack somebody. And so if you say it's a confession, it is just that the president is sharing with the people of Ghana some challenges that he has or he's facing as a president. And he goes on to say that he has confidence in the man. Let me tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. What uh, um, those within the NPP and NDC agitating for finance minister to be sacked are doing so because they do not like the badly needed discipline he's establishing over the management of the public funds. Mm. That's number one. Mm. And he's giving some reasons here. He says the first category of these people, uh, he calls them bad nuts. They want the by hard spending of taxpayers' money to continue unabated. They miss the free flow of money that occurred in 2012. These are not ordinary foot soldiers of the party. They are leading members of the NDC. Some hold positions in government. And he says, for such people, it is not about the development of Ghana. Then he goes to a second category of people who are asking. He says, this category is the ignorant people. They include party bigwigs and ordinary foot soldiers. They do not understand the truth that the government is very broke. It is not generating enough broke. revenue to pay the single spine salaries accumulated areas and finance all the roads, schools, and other infrastructure projects. That we all desire. And part of the problem stems from the unprecedented by hard spending of 2012 when government overspent in its budgets by 8.7 million uh, Ghana cities yeah. and ended the year uh, and ended the year with a budget deficit of gross domestic product uh, of a ratio of 12.1. Good. Two categories. Mm -hmm. The ignorant and the bad nuts who want free flow of cash. Yes. This could be possible reasons. And I'm saying that there's always a reason why you <coughs> want to see the back of one minister or the other. Indeed. You may even add another reason that probably <coughs> some people have gone to the ministry to see him and they couldn't see him. <laughs> we hear all those things, that there's a barricade to meet somebody. So my point is that the president is the one who appoints. He has a prerogative to disappoint. What has he said? He has given a clean bill of health to the Minister of Finance and says that he has confidence was he, in was he him. Sick? <laughs> that you should be given a clean it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> euphemism. Okay. Right. So, I don't see what <laughs> I don't see what the farce of this is. Okay. Probably some people will say that as a president, he shouldn't have made that public. Right. Mama Yaga, that's the criticism from a former you know, chief of staff, Kojon Pini. He says, <laughs> well, President Kofo, you know, also had to contain a lot of these pressures, and he doesn't come out to say anything. He, th he thinks it's a sign of some immaturity on the part of the president. Okay. Or that <laughs> he's making these confessions to run away from taking full responsibility when he decides to sack the minister. Uh, I, I, I don't think so. I don't think it's mm -hmm. immaturity. Indeed, if there's anybody who has been well prepared to be president in this country, it is uh, President John Dramani Mahama. I mean, he's built <laughs> all the experience that... Uh, and this is the result? He's built all the experience. Indeed, if it were some other person managing this kind of situation, we would have seen a more difficult you know, uh, output. So I, I have every confidence, and I'm proud of um, the record of uh, President John Dramani Mahama <laughs> at this stage. That's Quila speaking. <laughs> Can you tell him oh, I'm sorry. to allow me? He's oh, been sorry, 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 This is not fair. <laughs> I thought you will, you will bring him to order. Oh, I've, 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 I've reined myself in. Don't worry. You oh, have? Yeah, I have. I have okay, I have. good. You heard the, the reasons that uh, Nicholas Isakagbana adduced? Oh, I mean, the president said what he said, and he hasn't told us what category of people um, are telling him things about the finance minister, and I don't think that whilst others can speculate. I don't think I fall into the category of people who should be speculating 
about um, these matters. So um, that is his analysis of <coughs> the NDC and what he thinks you know, is happening, the internal dynamics of the party. But the fact is, some say it's the, the politicians within the party, but the president didn't say so, right? That is fact. Well, I mean, the president didn't say that. So I'm not about to, you know, speculate on who are the people who are telling the president that the finance minister should but be removed. Someone suggested that but if I, it's not just the listening to the analysis. and the party people, then it could be people who mean well and who are in the finance industry and think that the Setekwe is truly not doing well. Well, I mean, I think that some aspect of the analysis, which is the need for fiscal discipline, I have no doubt that Seth is living up to his promise to ensure that there's fiscal guess, discipline. And I have no doubt that um, if we continue uh, at the rate that we are, um, we'll be able to uh, manage the situation effectively. I think beyond that, I'm very, very reluctant to engage in very speculative discussions about who is speaking to the president. Whether or not the president should have said it, well, as president, we can't deny him also the right once in a while to send signals to, 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 to people. Uh, sometimes it's deliberate. Sometimes just sending a signal. Sometimes it's saying, stop putting pressure on me to do X, Y, Z. Sometimes he's saying the president is getting frustrated where he ought to have known that these are expected pressures that he, he should expect. Well, he hasn't said that he's frustrated. He's said that I'm very confident in my finance minister. I have no doubt that he's doing a good job and will continue to do a good job. For me, it's not a statement about frustration. And, and I think that um, it's neither a statement about immaturity and, 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 and lack of experience. And it is, in my opinion, also uh, not saying that uh, he wants to abdicate responsibility when it comes to taking a decision as to a uh, racial fall. So I think we should just leave it at that. Yeah, um, and, 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 that's and, the style. And Dr. Sebe, you seem to suggest that, <laughs> and that's from your gestures and well, some well, comments well, that you have made on the well, side. You seem to suggest that the minister no. has superintended the financial situation we find, the economic situation we find ourselves in now, and so those calls are justified. Not at all. Not at all. Um, the finance uh, uh, position, mm. the finance minister position is a very sensitive one. Now, if you look at into, back into history, we, we rarely change our finance. Dr. Butri, Kwasi Butri was there from 82 mm. to yeah. 95, 13 years or so. Following, uh, we had Kwame okay. Pepper. He wasn't changed. Even under Kofo, Osafo Mafo did a full term. And then Kwajo Bahari do until he passed on. He wasn't... Osafo Mafo also mm. reminds you of some pressure from people for somebody to be sacked, right? Yeah, yeah but uh, none of them uh, was removed from office or even Ray Chapo. Mm -hmm. Even Dr. Was Dufour, he was sent to sports? Yeah. Yes. No, so it was the second the term. Second term. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Dufour also did four years. So when you are set to appoint a finance minister, mm -hmm. minister, you have to look at his competence, experience, political astuteness, and hope that he, you are going to retain him for four years. I will be shocked to hear that uh, Minister Tepe is dropped from government. Because with respect, who, who will replace him? Who will, will replace uh, Tekwe? No, I think I reserve my comments on that one. But I, I think he's the best material I see for the position now. He's cool headed. Uh, Butcher, Butcher is still around. Okay, well, it's the president's decision. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Dufour, too, is still around. But for now, those who, have, who, are, who are yet to assume the position, I think Tekwe is the best man around. Then, when, yeah. Uh, Ayaga talks about financial. He has done a deficit of 11% uh, in 2013. So how different is that from the 12% we did in 2012? I'm not uh, saying he should be retained on that score, but I think um, people have confidence in him. People think that uh, uh, he's cool-headed and he knows his staff when it comes to these tax issues. I will maintain him. I will maintain Mr. Tepede. 
I think the uh, president is rather trying to find an escape goat. He, he wants to make Tepe <laughs> an escape goat because he himself cannot carry his load. So he's trying to blame it on the head pan, which is Minister Tepe. And if indeed Tepe should go, then he should be prepared to also exit in 2016 because the finance minister embodies the government. He mm -hmm. executes the plans of the government. I so see. it's the uh, pressure <laughs> on his um, maybe maladministration. That's what he's trying to pass on to Minister Tepe because I, I can point out some ministers who should go, but not the finance minister. It's the pressure of what you say is maladministration. Uh, now, I don't know what you also think about this. Uh, looking at it from the, the, the approach, for example, by Mr. Mpianin saying that you don't go to the public yeah. with some of these things. I, I, I think that I'm most disappointed that President Mahama, you know, did what he did in, in virtually, was he complaining? Or was he complaining? He's, he's, I said he's the coach. Some say he's being a very no. frank president. So who was he complete Frank. Yes, very no, frank. Let me That's tell you, let me tell you what he tells me. He tells me that the president is helpless and lessless. For him to come out and say that, eh, look, people are putting pressure on me <laughs> yeah. to sack you, my finance minister. Ah, it's a complaint. It, can, it doesn't show a president who is confident. It shows a president who reports to some people. You understand? So he's making a complaint. It doesn't matter the yeah, atmosphere. Yeah, but we won't take that complaint. He chose his finance minister. and the manner in which he said it. it doesn't no, matter. No, no, it doesn't matter. Point is the message. You see, I've said this government is a communication government. The president has communicated <laughs> that people are putting pressure on him to sack his finance minister. He's complaining to who? He's a coach. He was telling us at Plaxa he's the coach. So he decides to change people when... <laughs> so why, if you're a coach, why yeah. are you now if complaining you're that you're they say, is it the GFA that is asking you to substitute the player? How many no, times have we been in the studio is it the GFA? and analyzed and said, this player should be allowed to play? No, no, no. Is it the GFA that is, that is <laughs> directing him or yeah. intervening that he should substitute the finance minister? He has said he's a coach. How many supporters you know something? Let me tell you something. You see, there's something called statecraft. There's something called statecraft. And Mama sat here and was, you know, virtually you know, touting that President Mahama is the best suited person because he's been trained for the job. Mm. Is this statecraft? Let me tell you, in the UK, in the UK, there's this system they call the Great Offices of State. There are four. Four prominent positions in the UK. The first of the Great Offices is the Prime Minister. The second is the Chancellor of the Exchequer. The third in line is the Foreign Secretary. And the fourth in line is the Home Secretary. S those four appointments, key to the U UK government. If I transpose that great offices of state philosophy to Ghana. Why should the prime minister be saying that people are telling me that I should sack my, my, the chancellor of the exchequer? It is, it is improper. This is not statecraft. This does not show a president who has been trained for the job, contrary to what Mama Yaga is saying. Is it everything that the president sees that he says? The pressures that go to him every day, the people who go to him every day, appoint this person, drop this one, drop that one. This is the banter the president is having with us. Please, if Mr. Some say, Tepe, some say you, you are expressing these uh, concerns because you are not used to a president who wants to be free with you and oh, we want are to be frank. To, yeah, but we are used to a president who uses iPad, not so. What is all this? What's, the, mean, co what's the correlation? Ah, but the president who uses iPad, people say he's a swagon president. Yes. Yeah, so if, if I'm saying that there's something called statecraft, and the president should act as if he knows statecraft. So when the president that brings it governance proper, to your doorstep. It is, oh no, what governance to my doorstep? When governance to your doorstep. Facebook, Facebook style of, of this thing. Please, let's, let's stop that. I I'm see. saying that <laughs> the finance ministry position, if we transpose it to the UK system, it is part of the great offices of state. Mm. And the president should not be talking. This thing, this thing can lead to even... Lack of stop, stop, stop. Oh, lack, lack of, of confidence, confidence yeah, in the economy. I see. Yeah. Stop um, market and, and things. Thank you. You understand? Thank so, you. So very, please, yeah, please. Thank you. Mr. Tekbe, I think he's focused on his job, even though he loves tax too much. Mm. But the president should allow him to do his work. Uh, uh, Nana Hene Edward said something. Good morning. I'm really enjoying your show, but where is mercy in journalism? Mr. Abdul Malik Kweku Bako <laughs> Jr. <laughs> I have really missed him. And that is true. Too many of you are asking... Uh, that question. Abdul Malik Kubaku Jr. will be here sh soon, so don't worry at all. Uh, this show is also brought to you by the candid sponsorship of Star Assurance. And Star Assurance is your CIMG insurance company of the year 2012, and they are your solid partner. They want you to talk to them on 0302 240 632 or visit their website.
starassurance.com and you will get mind-blowing insurance uh, packages that uh, you've never had before. So that's the invitation to you. Uh, the show is also brought to you by MTN. Everywhere you go, Arata Motors, they have the best vehicles at the best prices. And also is brought to you by Bank of Africa, strong as a group and as close as a partner. And of course, Lipton Tea, that's inspiration flowing from nature. That's what has been keeping all of us here very energetic. And as usual, don't forget... <laughs> As usual, well, don't forget, don't yeah. forget, yeah. don't forget to call 0204-336-444, and that's the line to Latida, that they make sure that I, I look sharp every morning. My guests uh, who have been on the show have been uh, Dr. Mark Sibeye Boa, he is the MP for New Jabbing South, he is a member of the Parliament Finance Committee and a former senior economist at the Bank of Ghana. Lawyer Egbert Fabel Jr. is uh, the editor of the and publisher of the Ghanaian Observer newspaper. Uh, 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 Abraham Amaliba is a lawyer. He lectures also and is a member of the NDC legal team. Mahama Yarga is MP, lawyer and information, minister, information and media relations minister. I'm Samson Ladia Yenini. This show has been produced by Sedem Ofori, Sami Odami, and of course, uh, Emmanuel Ante, and all the guys. Sabubaka, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, the news comes up next. This show is repeated on this same platform, television, at 9.30 p.m. It will also be on your Sky TV if you want to watch in Europe uh, or in London. Have a good afternoon.